Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to not the Everyone Chronicles. You may notice that I'm not Doug, but I'm going to be the best impersonation of Doug I can muster. And we are down a few players tonight, unfortunately, which is not Corona. We're good. But, <laughs> that we know of. Yeah, that we know of. Um, but so we threw a uh, mashup one shot quickly last minute so bear with us we'll just that and makes it twice as fun um so i am super excited to be a player <laughs> <laughs> yeah finally i'm not excited to be a player. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna do what we can mm -hmm. uh make it work yep so oh yeah Tonight, our players, if they will take turns introducing themselves so we can get to know the characters here before we start our party. Start off with you, Doug. <clears throat> All right, well, I am, uh, well, I'm Doug. I am playing Hi, Doug. Tedronicon, model number uh, X017. <laughs> <laughs> he is a warforged fighter. Uh, he is... He was basically uh, reprogrammed. He was uh, like a gladiator bot and was taken and repurposed by an unknown creator uh, who was trying to make him more lifelike and, uh, and everything. And so he has joined the party. Um, the creator asked these guys to let him tag along to learn how to become more human. Awesome. All right. Okay. Good to All know. right. Don't What's know what that is. Tedronicon. Tedronicon. Tedronicon X017. Do you prefer <laughs> Ted? Do you prefer Ron? Do you prefer. <laughs> you may call me Teddy. Oh, no. All right, Teddy. Oh, no. Why not call you that? <laughs> XOXO. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, XO. XOXO. I like it. <laughs> Teddy kisses and hugs. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Uh, I am playing Sporic, a. Uh, Portal Druid, Circle of the Spores, actually. Um, he's just a bit of a wanderer, kind of, I wouldn't say free spirit, but he's been out kind of traveling, just kind of getting the lay of the land, visiting different villages, different uh, cities, you know, figuring things out. Uh, and as far as a, kind of an appearance thing, he's got different fungi and, you know, just different little tufts of colorful, uh, you know, whatever, all over his his shell, his, his uh, at the top of his shell, on top of his head, pinks and greens and blues, just a, a wide array of colors. And uh, yeah, he also has more of a. Uh, I'll, I'll surprise you with the with the accent tonight, actually. So. <laughs> I like it. Well, I am playing Johann Vick. I will try my best to sustain the German accent. <laughs> it is what I started with when I created Johann, so I'm going to continue using this as Johann. Again, we will see how far it goes. He is a rogue dragonborn. He has leather armor. He uses a rapier and a uh, dagger. And he likes a good story. He just likes a good... Uh, that's what he's in. The, he likes magical items and he likes to know... Collect stories <coughs> for one day in his retirement. Alright. So... A robot, a turtle, and a dragonborn. <laughs> Walk into a bar. <laughs> this should be fun. Okay. <laughs> well, you nailed it. Yep. Thanks for ruining the surprise. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> tonight, you guys find yourselves taking a long respite. Okay. Nice two weeks off. You guys have been adventuring for a while together. Done a couple good missions. You're back in a town called Everruff. And you guys are just kind of thinking around town, wondering what to do with yourselves. So you guys decided you'd do a little <clears> day <throat> drinking. And you find yourself in the local tavern here, which is nameless, because there's only one bar in town. Okay. Um, and you guys are just kind of metering around. Like, if you guys would like to order a drink, you can place yourself in the bar, in the bar wherever you'd like to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of just relax. Was there... Uh... Is there a comfy chair, or is it all like bar stools? Oh, well, um, it depends. Are you a tailless dragonborn? Oh, I have a tail. 
thing. No, there are no comfy chairs. All right. <laughs> but, there are, <laughs> all right. but there are bar stools. <laughs> okay. Probably, probably the comfiest you're going to find. Yeah. <clears throat> for your condition. Yeah. I was just saying that. Condition. I mean, there's no comfy chairs. I was going to say Johan is over by the fire just working on his, uh, jotting down the, 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 whatever happened in our last adventure. All right. All right. Where, where, what are you up to, turtle? Uh, I would say Sporek is just kind of sitting at the uh, far table there. All right. This is going to be slow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, XL? <laughs> Ted? Uh, Ted. Uh, Ted talks. I am sitting at that table with him. Uh, and uh, in order to remain inconspicuous, I will order a beer. <laughs> All right. I am equipped with a relaxation mode. Shall I engage it? No. <laughs> at this point, <laughs> at this point in time, I have. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, a halfling woman comes up. <coughs> are you guys tall? I'm guessing you guys are really tall, right? I'm like five, six foot. Um, probably a little What's bit happening? shorter than. Um, yeah, just probably seven, seven foot. Comes up. Hey, did I hear drinks? What can I get you, gentlemen? Uh, I guess your best uh, dragon of ale. All right, we can do that. I will take the water, please. Okay, <laughs> we can. <laughs> it is a bar, sir. Do you not serve water? I'll find some. And you? Do you have any oil? <laughs> I've got some lamp oil. I don't know if that'll work. It's a little flammable. I am not equipped to receive this. <laughs> I will have an alcoholic beverage. Sure! I can do that. Be right back, gentlemen. Thank you. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little nerd. Walks away. Um, bar's not too crowded. There's there's a few patrons in there. It's kind of middle of the day. You know, so you pretty much got your, your older gentlemen mm -hmm. hanging out, not talking, just making love to their beer. And uh, about this time, you guys start to hear a little bit of ruckus outside. Mm, ruckus. You hear hoof prints. What sounds like a little pop, 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 and people with gasps and noises. And the next thing you know, bam! The doors open up as a little sheep, the cutest sheep you've ever seen. Puffy, white, little blue bow tied around its neck with a tiny little bell. Ding, 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 ding. Comes in <laughs> and kind of stops and he looks. And that side of you three just makes his way over as fast as he can and just bow straight into the turtle <laughs> and just continues to just headbutt you. Error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? The sheep oh, appears what? to be malfunctioning. <laughs> but don't you, could you fix? <laughs> <laughs> ah, shall, ah, shall I can engage I, like, kill mode? Grab by like the scruff and just kind of like try to pick it up. Sure. It's maybe. A, you said it's a tiny sheep, right? Or like... Oh, for a sheep? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make a strength check. So, straight strength check. Yep. Natural 20. Whoa! <laughs> oh, 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 that's a way to start the night off. All right. All right. This go. sheep mm -hmm. must be more fluff than meat because <laughs> he does not seem very ha very uh, heavy to you. And you pick him up, and once he gets about head level, you notice that there seems to be a scroll inside of his mouth that he tends to be moving his head as if he wants you to grab it. Take that from him. Okay. Upon inspection, you notice that there's a seal. Okay. A red seal with no insignia whatsoever, but it is a sealed scroll. Okay, so it's no defining marks on the seal. It's just, it's been sealed. Correct. Okay. Correct. Pop that off and... The moment you pop that off, you notice that, well, all three of you actually notice, if you do feel and have feelings, sir, <laughs> a slight warmth start to flow through you. Mm -hmm. And as reading the scroll, you realize that this is a modified speak with animal scroll that has an area of effect, mm -hmm. not just a personal effect. 
And so it has affected all three of you. And the next thing you hear is, bah, bah, oh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, I knew you three were the right people to come to, especially out of this group. I'm in great need of assistance. Put him back down on the... Thank you, sir. <laughs> I feel much better. Although, the eye to eye was quite nice. I'm kind of tired of looking up at people. It's an ugly sight. I'll take a knee. Curious. And now he's like, again, I don't know, like, okay, calm down, calm down. I don't have time to calm down. What is your name? My name is Freelin something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sean Bright. Freelin Sean Bright. Correct. And I'm the local wizard here, and I seem to be having some trouble. My apprentice has gone a little crazy, and he's, he's turning me into a sheep. You guys hear him, right? Yes. Okay. Affirmative. And I could really, I could really use, I could really use some help. And about this time, you guys suddenly hear a howl coming from outside. This time, followed by screams rather than just <coughs> gasps and shuffling of feet. Hmm. And quickly, soon after, before he can continue to explain his story, you notice that three large wolves with collars but unchained and very intelligent eyes step through the door of the bar, followed by a half orc gentleman with a great sword. Freeland. Aggressive intent detected. <laughs> As they step in, all four characters seem to be looking at around the bar and lay eyes on you three. And as they step in to come towards you, you notice that they've made room for one more figure in a hooded cloak. Bigger than any... Definitely bigger than a man comes in. You're not quite sure what it is under the cloak, but it is rather large. Probably about like eight or nine feet tall. Very big, and just stops at the door, okay. while the three wolves and the half orc walk up to you guys. And the next thing you hear is, "Hey, what are you doing with that sheep? That's my master sheep. We are doing nothing with the sheep. He came to us. Good. Then you won't mind me taking him back. By all means. We were conversing. Walks up. And he grabs the sheep, or attempts to. Yeah. Hold on. This sheep was just saying that he's a wizard. <laughs> <coughs> and you believe that sheep? Sheep don't talk. I know you use a turtle, but figured you were more intelligent than that. Well, there are magics that allow for this. I am able to confirm his words. The sheep did, in, did indeed speak. <laughs> and as a warforged, it is impossible for me to be insane. I mean, has a point. Has to. Not from the looks of you, sir. Either way, that sheep's coming with me. That's my master sheep, and I'm taking it back. And but there is a, uh, a finder's fee. You know, sheep comes to us, we give you the sheep. That's, I think... I think we are entitled to a little coin. You're going to make me pay you for a sheep that's not yours? I don't think so. And he begins to move forward towards the sheep. And who is your master? Aggressive intent. Increasing. Ted, Shall I engage kill mode? (laughs) Be ready, Ted. And and who's your master? After hearing that, he's got two hands on his sword, and the wolves are barking. They have not moved to, or not barking, but growling. They have not moved to attack yet. But upon hearing kill mode, they've gotten very defensive. And... Who is your master? Master Nook. Nook. And then I turn to Freeland. Is is Nook your apprentice? Yes. Yes, it is. Please don't make them take me back. They've had me in that garden for two years. I... Is it not a pleasant garden? <laughs> no, it's not a pleasant garden. Were you a human wizard? Yes! I was the most powerful wizard in this area. And I need your help, and I can reward you. I can reward you greatly. Yeah. And I'm just imagining that the org is hearing me, like we're talking, and bat, 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 bat. He is, yeah. and he's been slowly <laughs> creeping closer to the sheep. <coughs> um, can, uh, how much? We noticed that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is the reward? The reward yeah. is that you get to leave here or to stay here and finish your beer and I leave you alone. Now please Sorry, I was talking to Freeland. give me my master's. Sh- I do not believe you understand the concept of a reward. 
I believe it is more fitting that he expects monetary or physical compensation of some sort. Thank you, Teddy. Hmm. One of you two make a persuasion check. Oh my god. Uh... <laughs> so you don't want me to? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me pull up my stats. Actually, any you, in you three of us are persuasive. I'm, I'm at the same Oh, Actually, yeah, I'm yeah. really bad. We're all bad at persuasion. I thought I, I, thought I was good at it. Oh, that's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I thought I was good that's at that. Scary. Fight this bad boy. Look, you're not keeping that sheet. As far as reward goes, Master Nook's cabin is about four miles down the road. You can have a talk with him after I take his sheet to him. Please educate me. What does the law say about free will sheep? If the sheep, have if the sheep expresses a desire not to go, what does the law entail? Seeing as how sheep don't talk, error. They don't have free will. We have been conversing with the sheep. That's nice. <laughs> Still my master sheep, and it's going back. He gave me a duty, and I plan to fulfill it. I would recommend seeing someone about getting your ears repaired. They seem to be malfunctioning. I don't have time for you guys. And he goes to grab the sheep. Just put a hand, like, 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 whoa. Just stop his hand from grabbing the sheep. He's just pushing right by you. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> I'm about to kick. The, I'm about to light this fire because I'm ready to fight something. I, I, right. Like when he get pushed back, I put my hand on him and I cast Chill Touch as I'm pushing oh, near my hand. him. Well, on on the. Oh, okay. I, I guess it's the half work figure that's doing this. Half work. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you that one. Go ahead and uh, let's uh, roll initiative yes. before you um, roll your damage. Please show me oh. where we're at. You know what? I don't have a sheet. To have a sheep. That's important. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I, I don't think I have any sheep. That's okay. We have a white. This will be a sheep. There you go. Sheep. White and blue, and yeah. I like it. I like it. So, where are right, you, gentlemen? I think we had said we were at the far table. Yeah, where's the scenario happening? Wherever you're seated. Yeah. So, which one's the front door? The There's only one door in this bar. I think we were all because that's I know I said. Doug and I said we were over on the far table. Yeah, I guess sure. I'd be right there with them. Yeah, I'm just next to him. Put you guys here. I'm pretty sure you guys have stood up by this point. Yeah, as oh, soon yeah. as I see him do this and the guy move and him do something or whatever, I instantly stand up and I and from my back, you actually see extending from my back two big swords. And I'm just like, <laughs> kill mode engaged. <laughs> yes. So we we'll put our three wolves here. Put our orc here, because well, <clears throat> no, where is the turtle? That's me. Uh, I'm the one with the, the antlers. Because right. there was, we could find the turtle. With the sheep halfway under the table, put you close enough to get me. Would I get a surprise attack before initiative starts? So you, I, I'm asking. I still question. want to roll initiative okay. to see where we're at, but I will give you the surprise attack. Sweet. So, you haven't noticed that yet, and I don't have a way to cover that up. <laughs> That's fine. All right. We won't matter. Just so, over there. what do we have for initiative? Big, Big old shot. six. Huh. 18. 12. What's he going to do first? Sorry, right, though. Mechanical pencils. I need my pencil. <laughs> All right. Sorry, what was that again? 18. 12. 12. What'd you say yours was? Six. Six. Yeah. I go from yeah. a 20 to a four. On those rolls. I guess I should say, just for the, like, a little bit more clarification for the spell, a spectral hand reaches out and stops him. Because it's, it's a range attack. It's not actually like a, I have to touch an attack. Okay. Create a ghostly skeletal hand. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's almost, yeah. You know, it's something like Chill Touch in the thing, but you can touch him with the hand. Yeah, I 
think so. You get to do it once you get to fifth level. All right. So is that a is that an automatic? I'd have to roll to hit. Okay. Yeah. So roll roll to hit. Uh, that is an eighteen. Oh yeah, that hits. Alright, So we've got two seven points of damage. <clears throat> and it's like this uh I'd say greenish kind of spectral looking hand that just reaches across wherever. I guess uh, well, I yeah, guess he's kind not of very far from Yeah, not very far. Eh. For right. for argument's sake. So the spectral yeah. hand reaches out and a cold chill just goes through his body. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, and it's necrotic damage as well, just if that makes okay. a difference. But. Yeah, is. And you see him just like, oh, and grit <coughs> his teeth and kind of push through it. And at that point, you notice that the bear has seen this action. The orc is not whose name is oh, Gus, by the way. There's a bear in the room. The hooded figure all of a sudden tips his head back as the hood comes back, and you see just ginormous white bear. Oh, good. And he just and instantly is in the fight and moves a lot faster than you think a bear should be able to fight. Oh boy! Okay. And he's got forty feet of movement, so he's going five, thirty-five, forty. He gets right there and is moving straight to go help out his buddies. Next, <laughs> and all good rules is the wolves. <laughs> oh boy. We're dead. No, sorry. It is Jen. Perfect. You okay. need to go before the wolves. Alright. What would you like to do? How, so that barrel over there by, by Tegdrin, mm -hmm. how tall is it approximately? I kind of hide behind it. I'm trying to... How big are you? Like six feet. You can try. Okay. I mm. will... First, I'm going to chuck a dagger... At this oncoming bear. Oh, okay. Uh, that would be sweet. That's a twenty-four. That hits. And is that? Um, I guess it's not sneak attack. It's not sneak attack. Okay. Uh, so then it would just be one d four plus two. So that's five. And then I'm going to run to the barrel and attempt to, like... You want to hide? Yeah, Bonus hide. action, hide? Yeah. Okay, roll stealth check. That doesn't right count. <laughs> stealth Got me on table. is... Ah, 16. 16? Okay. So, yeah, so you... As soon as the bear starts to charge him, you move super quick and release one dagger straight at him and hitting him right in the chest. It, it's stuck, okay. but he doesn't seem to care. And so. just keeps on moving forward as you dive behind the barrel and seem to not be paid attention to. Cool beans. Cool. All right. Next are going to be the wolves. So, and this one yes. is you. Yep. There. Okay. And so then... Next is going to be the wolves. We're going to have two wolves that we're going to circle around the table. Go five, ten. Yeah, yeah, they got enough to get here. And this one, five, ten. is going to go right here. So these first two are going to attack you, Mr. XO, and that's an actual one. That is a seven. No. <laughs> okay. Both wolves come up and take bites at you, and I'm assuming you're made of metal. Yes. Okay. And are a little bit shocked, and you hear just as they clamp <laughs> down on the solid metal. <laughs> realize that it is not their favorite chew toy. <laughs> the, uh, the third wolf is going to go for a bite on the turtle. And that is a. Doesn't tell me. So we are going to say that, that is a 14. Uh, 14 does not hit. 
I got this one. Armor class. I got 19. This one as well bites and just nits mm -hmm. the back of your shell. It doesn't seem to do much damage. Um, it is now your turn. All Mr. right. XO. So if this. Uh, so they ran up to me. So I'm just gonna take. Uh, with, so I've got dual wielding. So I'm taking my two attacks here. On. Try two extra attacks. Um, on one of the dogs. So we'll go. We'll go with this dog first. Okay. Attack at the same one. That's a uh, 26. That is definitely a hit. Mm. Uh, so. is 13 damage. <laughs> All right. As you <clears throat> as you take your first swing with your sword, the wolf, seeming instantly intelligent, more intelligent than wolves that you've seen in the past knows exactly what you're doing and ducks out of the way, more of a human-like action, and but not quick enough to miss your second one and is falling in one foul swoop. There we go. <clears throat> he is out. Um, so, turtle, tortoise. Come back and eradicate. <laughs> I'm up next. You're up. <laughs> Player one has entered the battle. <laughs> so... In a fashion a lot quicker than his voice would indicate, uh, he brings out his quarterstaff and just kind of whips hard across the half work. All right. Doing a, yeah, just a, a melee attack. Oh, yeah. uh, that is a 12. That is miss. Dang it. Uh, that's all I got. To, what? Yeah, that's all I got. I don't have a bonus action. and. I'm good. All right. So after freezing him with your with your hand, you take a long swing with your bow staff, and he just uses his great sword to kind of parry it off and let it slide off the side of his blade. He then follows it up with a quick slash towards you mm -hmm. with a 24 to hit. That hits. Okay. As a six for damage. Six damage. All right. All right. And after that, he reaches and does a bonus action grapple on the sheep. And he succeeds. So after he swings and gets a good hit, or gets a good hit on you. Mm -hmm. He then reaches down with one hand and grabs the sheep. And he is going to be half movement with the sheep. Uh, I am going, because I've got so Warcaster. Yeah, and you would get an opportunity attack. Yeah. Uh, which wouldn't stop him, right? Unless it's going to kill him, so I won't move him yet. I'll let you get him. and figure out what I can do. I will thorn whip him. Ooh. Yeah. As a as a re uh, reaction. Okay. So it's natural twenty. <laughs> All right, okay. there. That, Woo. that hits. I want to roll your dice? I haven't. I, I've rolled. I think that many twenties in the whole campaign so far. <laughs> really? Don't waste it tonight, Larry. <laughs> right. So it's two d six. Uh, so that is eleven. Are we? We're doing double. Double, we're doubling double the dice. dice. Correct. So that is 22 points of damage. Good gracious. Ooh. Yeah. Oh man, oh man. Um, he has a turtle he's, power. Okay. As, <laughs> <laughs> was, was splitting your as he grabs Shine Bright <laughs> and begins to run the other direction, uh, 20. He, uh, <clears throat> you take your thorn whip and reach back and just swing it as hard as you can, and all of the thorns seem to enlarge as it's coming down to almost look like flail ends as they stab him in the back and he 
excruciating pain. But he just continues to trudge forward and move so, towards the door. <clears throat> I don't know if he is considered... He's, I guess we're all medium size, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, because I can do... If he's large or smaller, then I can pull him 10 feet closer to me. But Ooh. Good I'm lucky done. for him. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so he now he has a sheet and is moving out. And oh, no, sorry. Large or smaller. So I can pull him closer to me. Wait. It's oh, if large, he's smaller than Lord. Smaller than Lord. Okay. So he, is there a yeah. roll? Is there a roll for that? No. I said if uh, make a melee attack. If the attack hits, the creature takes two d six because I'm at fifth level. And if the creature is large or smaller, you pull the creature up to ten feet closer to you. So okay. Mm-hmm. Moving back. Whoa, there, Bessie. Ooh. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. He's not grappled, right? No, he's not sure. grappled. Okay. So then that takes us back to the bear, who. Seeing this happen is going to move and just flip the table as he goes. Nice. Okay. And level up with you. And he is going to take his attack. I'm going to also take my reaction. He, oh, no, sorry. We're not at the start of the new, new round yet, are we? No, that is the start of the new round. This is he the, was the top of the round. Then I am going to do my reaction here, and he's going to take one d4 necrotic damage because I've got a uh, what's it called? There's a thing that I have. What is it? It is super cool. Halo of spores. There's like a constant study of halo of spores around me. Anybody that comes within <coughs> ten feet of me, I can choose to take a reaction on that one creature, and they take one d4 damage. They have to make a con save. Con uh, save. Be a DC 14. Oh, he got so 12. He got 12, so he failed. Three points of damage, necrotic damage. Three points of damage. Okay. It's the Beyonce remix. <laughs> so, fungus halo. He takes, a, fungus halo. He takes a uh, swipe at you with his claws uh-huh. on a natural 20, so oh, 25. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, oh, no, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Might be healing myself after this one. So 20 points of damage. Woo! Oh and no, Larry. On his first attack? <laughs> okay. And then yeah, yeah. after the claw attack, he takes a bite at you. Yep. At 21. Uh, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the only way that can actually heal here too. <laughs> yeah, it's 1d8. For 9 points of damage. Okay. We are... We are feeling it right now. <laughs> oh, we're, we're live. I am at eight points right now, eight hit points. So. All right, Teddy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and then he sits there and it is now... Yo-ha. Your turn. Cool. I'm going to... All right, I'm going to attempt to get my sneak attack. I'm going to attempt to, like, sneak around at Ted's shoulder. I'm going to move around and, like... Basically, get within range so I can see the orc and the bear, um, but not get so too to move far. This way? No, 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 towards me. This way. Yeah, right at where the dead uh, wolf is, basically. All right. Everybody seems to be pretty distracted, so Sweet. about there. Yep. All right. I'm going to use. So I have an aberrant dragon mark. I'm going to use that to to do magic missile. Magic missile. All right. <laughs> Which is an is, instant hit, right? What is this? Yep. Yep. And then I just roll. Three. This is on or at? Oh, two against the orc, one against the bear. Okay. Yeah. So I just roll three d fours, right? Can I borrow two d fours? I only got one. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Uh, we'll just do two for. So this will be the orc's damage, which is five plus two seven for the orc. Yep. And this is for the bear. Uh, three. Okay. Oh, sneak attack, right? Yep. You were in. Hold on. How does that work again? I'm kind of curious how it would work on a, a spell attack. Does it? Well, do I get sneak attack with my spell? That's a spell. I thought you were throwing daggers. Ma- magic oh, missile. magic missile. Oh, no, no, I don't believe you do. It's got to be with a melee weapon. A light melee weapon. 
Alright, alright. Yeah. It does say ranged weapon. Well, yeah, okay. Okay. Weapon. Yeah. okay. That's fair. Okay, that's it then. Um, yeah, that's it. Alright, so half a movement, bonus action. Do what now? You don't have any bonus actions. Like, you could bonus action, hide I mean, again, you could I attack. Can, yeah, I'll hide again. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, that's, a, a, that's a bar right there, right? That's the bar, correct. Alright, I'm gonna try and acrobatics over the bar and hide below it. Alright, give me an acrobatics check, please. And then a stealth roll. I'm assuming it's like a it's not it's like a see-through bar, right? It's like no, a it's a solid bar. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That should get it. Uh, acrobatics is 20, 24. Stealth is twelve. Twelve. Yeah, plus eight. That's right. Acrobatics. So you you jump with the best parkour of your life, buddy, and never touch the bar. Matter of fact, that's right. You jump and grab the beer. Yay, <laughs> does. <laughs> <and just, laughs> slightly take a sip. Doesn't spill a drop. <laughs> as you're going over the bar <laughs> to duck behind. <laughs> so, and the magic missiles did hit both targets, but they are very entwined with what they're doing and gotcha. barely noticed. Perfect. Good All to right. know. So now we are on. Is there? That was you. So now we are on the wolves. We got one less. And so, uh, let's see. This one is going to attack you. Four ten. Uh, no. Okay. So he's <laughs> no. still he's still biting at you, and it's just like you're wearing solid armor, and you're just kind of laughing at this point at the dog trying to rip away oh, your armor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> While the other one. <laughs> While the other wolf is doing everything he can to distract you uh -huh. from the, uh, the orc boss. And that is a nine. No, that does not hit it. Thank goodness. Okay. So then that takes us to W. All right. Uh, am I technically engaged with the bear? No, he's no. just big. And I'm going to... Do you want me to move or... You can move. That's fine. So five, ten, fifteen... Move around. Uh, can I without breaking can I go melee? And attack him. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. All right. <clears throat> that is a sixteen. Sixteen that hits. Does. He's still up. That is a natural 20. Hey! Ooh. Man, the 20s tonight. Dude, killing it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's, uh, it's 22. Damn it. So, <laughs> as you swing with your first sword, you catch him right on the side of the arm and just almost cleave the thing in twine. Okay, but luckily the sheep is in the other arm because as it kind of spins him and he continues to move forward with the sheep, you take the second hit and just cleave off the arm <laughs> that was carrying the sheep. <laughs> and the sheep is now very pink and very saturated. <laughs> and poor old Gus falls down dead. <laughs> Armless Gus. Combatant eliminated. <laughs> Give it up. Give it up, Ted. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> and then that, the sheep does get a turn. He's going to run away. Where is he going to go? He will probably. He is running that direction to get out of harm's way. And then it is now. Well, it would have been. Gus is turned, but Gus is dead. So, <laughs> that takes us back to the top of the order with the bear. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't gone yet. I haven't gone yet. Oh, that's right. I need to go. Sorry, you are. You're the last, bear, you're the last on the order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to... Or no. Well, yeah, because it would have been the order. So, yeah. yeah. And you're after him. Um, I have a 
wanting to do cure wounds on myself at I'm gonna do it at first level. Kind of twin that. Uh, so that is 1d8 plus 3, 6, 3, so that's 9 points. Back to me. Okay. That out. So get a bear and I would be bear. The dragon. Wild shape. Bear. It only circle the moon can do as a bonus section, right? But when they wild a druid wild shape. To be, well, it depends on the circle, because uh, I think it's. I think circle the moon can do bonus section. Bonus action. Yeah, yeah, it's an action for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is an action yeah. twice for him. Yep. So uh, I am probably kind of done. There's something I do as a total to up my AC. I don't know what it's you called. You your shell, King. Shell defense. Now that's an action. And you used your action. Yeah. Uh, I think that is pretty much it. Yeah, I can't do anything as a bonus action, so. That would be it. All right. It's now the bear's turn. Uh, seeing Gus down and seeing the sheep run, the bear is going to let both of you have an opportunity of attack. Yes. Because he's going to run Sweet. right through the middle of you, so you both get an opportunity. Son of a... Do I? Yep. He's going to go 40, and he's going to attack to grapple. He's going to try and oh, grab the sheep. I rolled a 12. You rolled a 12. That is a miss. Yep. I crit Oh, Which crit? Critted? Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm, right. a, I'm a champion, so I get crits at 19 and 20. Oh, okay. Ted, <laughs> killing it. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's uh, 22. 22 plus 4, uh, 26. 26? Nice. <laughs> Bear's hurt. You take a gigantic swing. You grab both of your long so or both of, Are they long swords or are they... Uh, Great swords. Uh, great swords. So you take both great swords and clap them together <laughs> and just take a giant baseball bat swing at this bear and just big old gouge down the side like you're keying a car as he's running by you. And he continues to run like he has a flat tire and he's leaking <laughs> air, but it's blood. And he's running straight at the sheep on all fours. As, and he attempts to bite the sheep to what? try and pick him up, but fails as the sheep squirms out of his teeth. All right, Freeland. So, it is now your turn. All right, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to chuck a dagger at the bear. At the bear with surprise attack, all right? Yep. Don't fail me now, Dice. That was 26. Did you need to bear for? Oh, oh shoot. shoot. 26. Yeah. God dang it. Yeah, it's probably not going to hit, but let me make sure. 11. 11, that is a miss. Okay. No bonus action, no subtle movement. Hold on, let me think. Uh, I guess as as a rogue and a dagger, you should be able to attack twice. I right? do, but I don't have a whole lot of... You yeah. can do it offhand. Yeah, that's what, what I mean. Anybody can do it offhand without adding your, like... Modifier. Yeah, would I still get yeah. sneak attack with that? Or would that count as a modifier? Uh, uh, sneak attack is your first attack. Yeah, but if it misses. I think I only have one deck of that. Yeah, I'll let you, I'll I'll let you get it. I'll let you get it. Go ahead. If you want to take a second attack, you can. You can gather. Yeah, I don't want that bear to leave. Um, try again. So no modifier, but I still get sneak attack. Okay. There we go. That is 19 to hit. That hits. So then sneak attack number 3d6s. Let me double check on that. I get 3d6s plus a d4. 
It's a bit subjective. Is that? Yeah, because it's a once per turn thing. So you could say that as long as it's within its turn, it could apply for either attack. But you, or you could make the argument that it's only on the first one that you get a, the he. In this case, it's because he's hidden. So yeah, the, you could make the argument that the first attack he's no longer hidden from the second. So it just depends on how you want to rule it. I don't want to give it to you. Cool. Go ahead. It. That is a eight. All right. So after missing your first and it just clearing right over the top of the bear, you shake it off, deep breath, and the release. And it flies true. There you go. And it flies fast. <laughs> and you just get lost in a sea of fur. And the next thing you hear, <laughs> and just <laughs> down the bear goes. There you go. <laughs> Take that shit. And the bear's down. Down goes, um, down goes trinket. <laughs> <laughs> finally. I, finally. I, I Good. <laughs> With that, I still have movement, right? You do still have movement. Okay, seeing that he's dead, I'm going to. Jump over the bar again and approach the sheep. All right, what's your move? Uh, Thirty feet. Thirty. All right, so out of the way. Well, you can jump a dead bear. Okay. Yeah, I can. <laughs> All right, so that makes it the wolf's turn. Um, wolf one is going to break engagement, and he's going to make a run for the door. I'm going to try to attack. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, so that's going to be a 24 to hit. That hits. And this is with poison spray. So okay. it's 2d12. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So that is 13 points of damage. <laughs> so he ran, <laughs> but the poison spray got him, and he just kind of slowed down <laughs> as he went Aww. and just... Just like you ever take your dog, your dog for too long of a walk, <laughs> and he just comes in like, <gasps> <laughs> and just hits the floor. But worse. Great, we're okay. killing dogs now. This is uh, you yeah. know. It's okay. He's actually a person. If that makes it better. <laughs> the last one. The last one is uh, is going to try and run as well, um, and break engagement with you. So opportunity is that nineteen or twenty again? Just a second. With, uh, oh. Just a 17. Plus Still 7. Hits. So 26. <laughs> uh, so 12 damage. I'm sorry. And this last oh. dog. Danny, I poison spray I did wrong. It's a, actually a save throw. So Woo! do a con save. Woo! You got to be 14. Retroactive. Yeah. Hold on. On a con save? Yep. Sorry, that was my bad. Looked at the wrong two things. You got Eyes 12 crossed. plus... Got thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing, nothing changes. Okay, he's still dead. Yeah, he's still dead. Yeah, that poor dog. Okay, and speaking of poor dogs, how would you like to do it, man? Because <laughs> it's the last guy on the field. Dog murderer. Uh, choose how so, you'd like to kill this dog. He uh, he, he says uh, he like looks around and then then switches to the other voice and is like, down boy. And puts his hand out, and as the dog bites his hand or whatever, oh, like, no. you know, he just kind of looks at it and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and the dog fall, falls <laughs> silent. Combat and eliminated. We need to work on your oh. compassion to do it. Glad there's not like a D&D PETA right now. A D&D <laughs> D what? PETA. Oh. Suddenly. Um, yeah, no, there's not. So... With all of them being dead, you see a few uh, stunned compatrons, except for one old guy sitting right here. He's still just staring at his beard, <laughs> hasn't looked up, hasn't even noticed anything's going on. Um, you happen to have noticed the halfling was also hiding behind the bar, and she pops up at about this time, seeing the commotion die down, is like, Hey! <laughs> what did you do to my bar? Uh, well, uh, we fought, and uh, it caused destruction. What? Guards! Guards! <laughs> they wait, messed wait, up my bar! Wait, wait, how much? How much damage for your bar? What? How, how much gold would it take to 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 fix this? 
To clean this mess? Yeah. There's a dead man on the floor! <laughs> we can take care of that. Just, you know, we can... To fix to fix what we broke, how much gold do you take? Do you need? While she's thinking, I just table. say, engage in clean mode. <laughs> and I walk over and pick up one of the dogs and just walk to the front door <laughs> oh, and toss no. it out into the street. <laughs> <laughs> and walk Spoke over to, to the other one. <laughs> All you hear is screams as you throw this dead dog out into the busy street with passers-by. I do it to the second one. <laughs> and, now, and now you hear faintly people outside going, uh, Guards! Guards! It seems to be something going on! I'm picking, oh. I'm picking through the half work scene. I'm basically searching. I'm trying to move the bear. Looting. <laughs> You're, you're looting the, the half work. The half work? Okay. Yeah. Uh, roll a, an investigation check. Twelve. Twelve? Okay. So as you're searching him, you find no arms. Um, <laughs> but in his pockets, you do find an old key with a lot of paint on it. Okay. Um, not quite sure what it's for. You find uh, about 30 gold in his pocket. And then his his two great swords, if you'd like them. Um, they seem still be usable. Okay. Um, on, and you rolled a twelve. Yep. Okay, and that's that's about all you find on him. Ah, I have heard of this. This is known as humor. Uh, for example, I believe he is considered disarmed. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Just go back to go <laughs> trying to move the bear out. <laughs> Spo, how much did you get on? How much gold did you find? Uh, Thirty. Can you toss me the bag? No. <laughs> Can you toss the half thing in the bag then? Well, how much did she say it was? Gonna, did she give us a, a? She didn't yet. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. She's more well, kind I'm of in shock and staring <laughs> and like. Do not with... worry, I am decreasing the price. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the bear and start rifling through his stuff, too. Uh, I mean, I know he's probably mostly bear, but I just want to see if there's anything. Anything. Yes, the bear is bear. Okay. Um, he does have his cloak, which is shredded and tattered and no longer white. Okay. Um, yep. and mostly red at this point. Yeah, yeah and, and, and that's about... Gotcha. Like, okay. He doesn't have much else on him. Um, and at this point, Shine Bright is... Oh, oh, thank you so much. Um, I, think, I think we should go... Um, they they don't take kindly to killing around here, even even if yeah. they are well deserved it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you don't mind, can we can we leave? Yeah. Well, one the, second. The halfling is still not saying anything. No, she's kind of walking around and inspecting the damage with a notepad and like trying to do math and trying to write up a bill and waiting on the guards. So. After I throw the bear out the door, if I can. <laughs> make make strength check on... Okay. The wolves will let you. Make a strength check on the bear. <laughs> right. Is that athletics? Um, yeah. Strength, we'll, strength. Well, we'll go with athletics. Oh, that's a one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, every time you go to pick up the bear, you just, like, grab like you would, you know, a big pillow or something like that, and you go, huh, and hair. And then you go again, and hair. And it just the hair just keeps pulling out, and you can't seem to quite pick him up off the ground. The time it will take to clean this will <laughs> take longer than anticipated. Um, I calculate one hour and one half <laughs> to clean at the current rate. <laughs> and Mary suddenly goes, so this is going to be a lot of money. And I don't know if you're going to be able to pay it once the guards get here and throw you in jail. So, uh, well, maybe we can avoid the guards. Um, it's a little hard to do. <laughs> There's two dead wolves out my front door, and a dead wolf, and an orc, and a bear in here. Okay, we should go with this. So I throw away the thirty gold. Maybe, maybe we should go and yeah. take care of the wolves outside. Yeah. Inquiry: Was it not self-defense? 
I'm not sure that it matters. It'll be hard to explain that to the gods. Should we not tell them that we were protecting the talking sheep? I mean, if they ask, but hopefully they won't ask. We can just get out of here before we talk to them. I'm just going to go. You just going to go? <laughs> yeah, right. pop up my hood and... Toss through the 30 gold door. that in the little pouch that I got for the half-orc, and then we go outside to deal with the sheep, or the wolf. We're yeah. leaving. <laughs> I see them go, and I turn and hand the, the halfling the, the clumps of fur, and then walk, they fall. <laughs> She's just standing awestruck, <laughs> awestruck, holding holding this bag of coins, and is just speechless as you guys uh-huh. exit. But you you're do. welcome for the partial cleaning. <laughs> Get out of my car! <laughs> and you do hear, as you make it about halfway down the street outside, mm-hmm. is all you hear is thirty fracking gold. <laughs> That's it. Like. <laughs> Not seem to be very. <laughs> as Shine Bright is a little bit ahead of you guys, going, I, th- I think we should make pace or make haste. Please come this way, and he begins to lead you guys out yep. of town. Okay. Um, after walking for a bit through the commotion, can you guys all three of you make a stealth check? Just can, curious. Can if you are, are, you trying to get out stealthily? Yeah, I am. Natural one. Yeah. <coughs> Turtle and a dragonborn and a robot <laughs> and a sheep. Yeah. I stick to the walls and like duck around. I got 13, a tw- 27. 13, 27. Natural one. one. Yeah, so it's a, a grand total I get of three. Up into the, the, I get up to the wall and everything like stiff and just kind of hit the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and <then> just. <laughs> uh, after you, uh, <laughs> for, for a dragon, a sheep, and a robot. And a turtle, mm-hmm. not on a yellow brick road. You guys don't seem to be raising that, that much attention, but you know, the there are some, there are some people watching. Um, <laughs> Shine bright leads you guys out of town and down about a mile out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, at at this time, about an hour passes, and he finally settles down and starts to talk to you guys like oh thank you so much I can't you will be rewarded I promise oh, like I have me. plenty of gold back at my cabin um but I assume we have to kill something to get this gold well maybe um I don't know about kill mainly I just I need my wand back okay um that would be helpful cause with that I mean I'm I saw you, and you seem to know a little bit of magic. And with my wand, I think you'd be able to turn me back into my rightful form. Well, I certainly hope so. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I can, I can reward you. I have plenty of money. Whatever you guys need, I can do it. So, if, if you'd be so kind as to... And about this point, oh, the, uh, the spell seemed to have worn off. As he said the first thing, can I, like, insight check? Sure, you can uh, you can insight check the conversation. What can I insight as a robot have? Sixteen. Pretty good insight. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> he he's, detection mode. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be lying. I mean, he is a sheep. It's a little hard to read the facial expression, but he seems genuinely scared and genuinely relieved that you guys have decided to help him. Mm-hmm. So that's right. that's the feeling that you get from him. And as he's bang sheep. Like, it's, that's it. He's kind of moving and, like, trying to get you guys to follow and just kind of running circles and very, he seems very agitated that you guys don't seem to understand him anymore. I can't speak with animals. I had a feeling. (laughs) Yep. I knew it was true. Okay. (laughs) And that lasts for 10 minutes, so that's probably going to be long enough to have the conversation, like, where we need to go kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So after you, after you cast it, cast it. And now it's just you. Yep, right? just me. Okay. And what? Why has the sheep stopped talking? Please lead the way. Oh yes, you. You can understand me again. For the next few minutes, I can. Wait. Do you want to take? Oh my gosh. Okay. I will. I will lead you guys there. My apprentice name is is is, Ahmed Uk Nook. Ahmed and Nook. The last I remember is, I was sleeping in my room while meditating mostly and he suddenly 
as I open my eyes, I just see him standing in front of me, like holding my wand, which is a transmutation wand. And I tried to ask him what he was doing, and all that came out was bah. And and that's about all I remember, except for the last two years, he's had me in his garden, and I finally got to escape. And so I don't know what to expect when we get there, other than lots of animals that are not animals. I've been watching him slowly. Every guard he hires, he uses my wand, and he turns it into something. Either certain kind of animals, and I've even seen him turn inanimate objects into animals. Hmm. So... Be warned, there, there, there will be some, and about that time is he... Because you know, I'm, well, I'm relaying this day to these guys, and it's at a little bit slower of a pace, so <laughs> it's going to take that full 10 okay. minutes. Okay. So he's, he's noticed that you guys no longer can mm-hmm. understand him, and is just now hopping around, waiting, and goes a couple steps forward to see if you guys yep. are going to follow him. Do we want to take a break? <clears throat> Would he yeah. like to be sheared? Maybe ask him. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she says no. I'm assuming that's how. <laughs> I am unable to compute your answers. I do not speak sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's very excited about the opportunity. <laughs> Is that what you're detecting? Very much so. He, he is keeping, the sword. He's backing up. He is keeping his <laughs> distance. <laughs> away from you, sir. I, I'm pretty sure that Johan is just messing with you. He doesn't want the shearing. Johan does not want to be sheared. Our yeah. sheep friend does not want to be sheared. I suppose you can speak with him still. So I put this over there. <laughs> and follow. Okay. You guys are settled yep. down. He, he begins yep. to lead the way. You guys have a little bit of time because it's, it's a couple miles down the road doesn't take too long mm-hmm. about an hour to get to get there and as you as you're heading down the road you find a split off dirt road smaller path doesn't look very traveled um, as as you're walking um, somebody make an investigation check or a perception check sorry yeah, sure since I don't know what you guys are passives are Okay, that's a seven for me, so nope. Uh, my, my passive is 14. 14. My passive is 13. Where are This is another humorous situation, for the sheep is shepherding us. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know a lot about human interaction, Mr. Ted. I have been studying it my whole life. How long? Which is... About three months. <laughs> good, good on you. Uh, perception. Ten. Okay, so you guys are only notice with a passive of 14. You um, notice that once you guys get on the side trail, there tends to be a lot of tracks, but none of them seem to be shoes. There's all sorts of different animal tracks. You're not quite sure what animals, um, but... They're definitely not human, and they're, they seem pretty quick. So, continuing down that path for about another half an hour, you um, come up to what seems to be like a guardhouse, I guess, maybe like a five by five little shack that's just with a fence on both sides, stone fence leading off into the distance. And, um, and yeah, you don't immediately notice anybody inside, but. Like you notice the shack. Yeah, it's like there's no gate, but it's it's open. Okay. But it seems to be the shack where they would stop anybody coming onto the property. Or is it in an open like field or more in the woods? So it's it's a little bit of both, like rolling hills, countryside. Okay. A lot of grass. There's trees, big oaks. Okay. Like it's big trees. I mean, far bigger than a standard oak. They're you know maybe like twenty feet around, and very tall but branching out really wide so they're sparsed out gotcha and and then but just rolling green hills and tall grass on both sides of the road as you come up and you just see the fence leading off straight you can tell that it's probably going around the property but you don't see an end to it because of the rolling hills do you want to do you want to go take a look i'm gonna go tree to tree 
and try to stealth into the guard shack. Okay. Okay, roll a stealth check. I'm just doing that just a quick now. I was using my own sword, so I have a little bit less damage. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what were you using? Great swords instead of long swords. Ah. Uh, would you like great swords? Because I grabbed two from the. Uh... No, they're they're two handed. Okay. So gotcha. unless I got like special approval, I couldn't use them. Gotcha. That is a twenty-seven. They don't even know where you went. Perfect. <laughs> Just I don't like it. All right. Yeah. So as you um as you creep up very slowly to the guard shack, yes. you notice an open door and one major window and nobody inside. The door's open. Door's open. There's nobody in there. Uh, it, it doesn't look you don't see cobwebs. It doesn't look like aged. I'm gonna check for traps. Okay. In case. What am I rolling? Uh, investigation. Uh, seven. You don't seem to notice any traps. Okay. Um, but you do notice, even with a seven, you notice that there's a large pool of ooze, like slime almost, <coughs> just in the middle of the floor, kind of like in front of a bench seat or a little stool. And on further inspection, it's even on the stool, as if somebody took a giant water balloon of slime and just dropped it on top of the stool. What color is the ooze? It's like a wrench black. Pretty, pretty nasty looking. Okay. I'm going to walk inside and explore the area, but I'm not going to touch the ooze. I'm going to do the best I can to like walk around it, see what's here, as long as I don't touch the ooze. All right. It's, it's, it's like a 5x5 five five shack. It's not very big. I mean, it has like a little desk, just a board plank desk in there, and then the stool, and that seems to be about it. Um, upon looking around, are you like rifling through stuff? Yeah. And so you notice that there aren't even any drawers. There's like a little basket on the bottom. It has some playing cards and, you know, doodads, pencil, paper. Like, I'm going to take the paper and pencil. Okay, you take the pencil and paper. Doesn't seem to be much in there. I mean, it's a deck of many things. <laughs> <laughs> no, normal deck. <laughs> Pull every one of them. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'll walk outside. <whistles> to the guys. How, how long did that take? He is blowing through his lips. Oh, uh, just, just like three minutes. Okay. Minutes. Mm. He, it's five by five, Jack. Okay. Didn't think I was going to take a short rest if it had taken a while, but... Okay. I guess we go up to them. I would just explain to them about the use and that there is nothing in the shack other than cards and paper. Uh, if I look at the use, do I know anything about it? Um, I want intelligence intelligence check. Eighteen. Eighteen. All right, with your animatronic brain <laughs> of high intelligence, scanning, <laughs> you can you can tell that it's what's the right word? It's biometric, so it's like it's not like anything you've seen before. It it seems like a a byproduct byproduct from like an animal, like maybe something you would see like congealed fat and kind of a slime consistency to it. It's definitely organic, but it doesn't seem to be organic like living. More like a byproduct from something. This seems to be an excretion of some biological nature. Have you seen this before? Uh, I have seen similar materials and substances. Is Perhaps it? this is an outhouse. Ah. I see. <laughs> that works so well. <laughs> for a robot to get that deduction. That's great. <laughs> that was it. I guess we continue on? There's nothing else here. <clears throat> the house is full of crap. Alright. Seems that way. So, 
Alright. Yeah. Alright, yeah. All right, so then the sheep's just kind of been hanging out. It didn't seem alarmed or nervous about <laughs> anything around. So he just continues to take you guys down the path and continuing to move forward. Um, uh, give me another. Are you guys moving stealthily or just yeah. with haste? Because I guess we're coming up on, like, we're on his property now. Correct. So we're kind of getting closer to the. Yeah, I'm oh, going yeah. tree to tree very stealthily. All right. Let's we'll see how this works. A little stealth check, please. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Natural one. <laughs> 16 for me. Oh, disadvantage. I had a natural 20, and now I have a 3. <laughs> No, four. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a four. Still, natural one. I had a natural three, but I have disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Um, How did you do so well the first time? I'm a ninja turtle now. <laughs> you know, it's it's mid spring, mm-hmm. and so there isn't a lot of debris on the road and on the path. But what debris there is, you find every piece as you step <laughs> and walk through. <laughs> I mean, it's a little noisy yeah. um, but you tend to manage for about another 10-15 minute walk down the street and the sheep shine bright begins to slow down a little bit and kind of is moving a little more carefully mm-hmm. so even while you guys were being stealthy he had no worries whatsoever and was just moving with purpose now that he, you're getting a little further down he's slowing down you guys can kind of tell you must be getting close um <clears throat> and you can't really see what's up ahead because even though the trees were sparse before, mm-hmm. there tends to be almost an unnatural overgrowth as you as you approach, and it is just all thicket and all brush that goes about 15 foot high with a large opening in the center <clears throat> that you can tell is where the draw, where the path goes up and through. You can't quite see the house itself yet but you can see that it pulls in through this giant tunnel of thickets. So are you guys continuing on? or What's the sheep doing? The sheep is, is continuing up, but slowly. He gets probably about five feet from the entrance to the of the, of the tunnel and, mm-hmm. and waits for you guys to catch up. He goes in the tunnel five feet and stops. Correct. Because it's only about 15 foot thickness of thickets. It's just all overgrown brush, gotcha. almost like a tree tunnel. You know, like if you were to have a giant hedge around your mm-hmm, yeah. around your property, that's what you're looking at. It's just a little bit more branchy, a little bit more thorny. Mm-hmm. Kind of like scan the like thicket, the entryway, or whatever for any kind of traps or anything like that. Sure, roll a perception check. Eight. An eight total. Okay, so you, as you, are you leading the way? Like, what's the pecking order? Here? I, was, I wasn't entering, I was just kind of trying to look. From the outside? Like, right at the entrance to the right. archway there. Right at the entrance, as you look in, you can see that the drive ends up coming in and, like, curving around. And so that you can see that the drive enters and that it expands openly to the right, but you can't <clears> quite see anything inside yet without first going through the door, but you don't notice any traps or any dangers. The thicket seems to be magically grown, but an actual thicket. Like, it's just more to keep privacy than anything else. It appears to be perfectly safe. I will enter. I walk in. All right. As you, as you walk through, you finally start to notice how open it is on the inside, and you couldn't tell from the outside just how far around this ring goes, but it's it's maybe like 20 acres around. Okay. So I mean it's it's big and in the center of it you see a giant cabin tree. You're not quite sure what because it's rooted like a tree but as as the tree goes up it spirals into a thousand branches and all those branches intertwine and mingle to cause a flat surface and then continue to grow up into a giant dome cabin made entirely of interwoven branches. And there's two other trees that seem to come up and do the same thing, 
And so you've got a three-tiered platform that the main platform with the biggest cabin seems to be about 20 feet in the air with another one to its left 20 feet in the air with a smaller cabin on it. And then one that's one platform that's down 10 feet with just an open area. And you see the ramp going to the 10 feet and then a ramp leading <coughs> up to the main cabin. And in front of this cabin, or in front of these trees, you see two giant apes <coughs> sitting around on barrels with a box playing cards. Just hanging out, playing cards, like just a little <coughs> abnormal for <coughs> apes. Um, and underneath the bridge, you, or underneath the 20 foot bridge, you notice another smaller building with a uh, half crescent moon on it, um, down on the ground level. So what with a, with a moon on it? <clears throat> Just a small shack with a half crescent moon carved in the door, you know? Okay. Good ventilation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay, so it's... I have read of this. This is called a tree house, and thus probably belongs to children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, we'll, we'll go with that. That's one yeah, but still, we don't need to walk up the, the two gorillas watching the door. It's like daylight. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, it's broad daylight. They're just hanging back. You know, they've got their swords, giant great swords stuck in the ground near them, and they're just playing cards, chatting it up in monkey speak. Do we want to wait for darker time to try and sneak? I can't speak with animals. <laughs> go ahead and burn through another spell. All right, hold that thought before we get to that. We are going to go ahead and take a break. Awesome. Cool, cool. Oh, wow. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that went by so, fast. And then we'll see what happens. Ten minutes or so, yeah. All right. Awesome. I am the creative director for the Everwind Chronicles as well as the Dungeon Master. The idea for Happy Action Fun Time uh, I think came from this desire that I've always had, probably since high school, to kind of do my own thing. To not be kind of tied down by your 9 to 5 job. Um, and I tend to be a very creative person, I like creative outlets and this creating some kind of stream, live stream channel uh, gave me that opportunity to flex my creative muscles and it's really challenged me in ways I did not anticipate. But I also wanted to do something that would benefit those around me. I've always been someone that has really enjoyed when other people get to pursue their dreams and their passions and just to see them light up and come alive. And I had a lot of friends around me, a lot of people around me who were very creative and love to do things like videography or storytelling or acting and I want to provide an opportunity that for them that might not otherwise be there uh, and I think the second reason I would really want to do this was because I wanted to, to find a way to plug in and get connected more with the geek community uh, it's such a fascinating group of people to be with they're so eclectic and there's all, it, it involves so many different fandoms and ideas and uh, to get to to communicate with them and talk with them and build a community with them uh, has been a, a dream of mine for a while. The reason that we decided to start with the Everwind Chronicles is uh, partially because of our love for D&D, especially I, I'm a huge D&D nerd. To have this outlet to create a story, cooperative story with other players, other people, uh, and get that community aspect as well was something I was very passionate about. And as I began to talk with Doug about his vision for it and kind of where he wanted to go with it, and we were talking about this building out this universe where other stories could be told, where we could create uh, maybe short stories or comic books or even other shows set within that universe. Uh, it really kind of 
it almost took on a life of its own and became a, a passion project for the both of us where we were just so involved and excited and ready to make this happen that it naturally became the, our primary focus as far as what show we were going to put on there. And so one of the ways we decided to go a little bit differently about this is to approach it as if it was a TV show or a movie uh, rather than a game. And so all of the promo, all of the um, content that's going to go come out around it, everything is about the story. And D&D &D is just the way we're telling the story. Uh, so Everwind was actually born uh, in a different D&D campaign uh, that Larry and Jeb and I were all a part of in the past. I wanted to create a world that as much as possible felt real. And that includes a lot of variety. It's not all dark, it's not all light and cartoony, it's not all good, not all bad. Um, there's just a lot of variety and a lot of different feels uh, where if you go into one city, it feels different than going into another city. You know, like each country has its own um, cultures and uh, habits and, and you know values. Because I am a believer that D&D's at the heart is, is about consequences, both good and bad. And so I wanted to create a world that was rich enough and deep enough that the things that the players do will have uh, widespread consequences uh, depending on what they choose to do. So when we were looking at potential players to, to invite and, and have join in this, uh, really this journey of storytelling, we wanted ones that uh, would buy in to the vision that Doug and I had for telling a story with the, the not not just players playing a campaign or anything like that, but that were actually going to be a part of collaborative and cooperative storytelling. And it's something else that's really important with any set of players you have in any really any campaign in D and D is chemistry. You need to have players that work well together or play well together that can kind of play off of each other and are willing to kind of step out and try these things and be open to whatever because it's it's I mean it is a game of improv you have to kind of play off of each other to some degree and we understood that chemistry is going to be a big part of that and I think we really we're excited because we've got these players that have really meshed well together we knew that at the end of the day, people are going to watch for the players. The players are the heroes of the story. They are the ones that people will get emotionally attached to and invested in. And so we needed players who were going to dive in and be invested themselves so they can create characters with that balance of having fun, but also emotional depth and motivation and a depth to their story that the viewers will fall in love with uh, right along with them. And I have to say as a DM, as I've been working with each of them on their individual characters, I've been blown away by uh, just how much each of the players have put into their characters. These characters really are um, rich characters that are gonna carry this story um, in really exciting ways. I am super excited to see them in this world uh, and see how they react to all the things that, that are thrown at them because I really do think these are characters that are deep enough to be compelling and deep enough to want to keep coming back to see what happens with them. We really believe that we have something here that can be successful. Uh, we are really excited about everything we've got planned and where this can go. Uh, and we are passionate and driven to make it happen. I have learned to be invisible. Invisible to those who have something I need or want. Invisible to the guards. Invisible to my enemies. I have even accomplished something no thief before me has. I have become.
become invisible to myself, for I cannot bear to look at my own reflection. But is this all there is to me? Is my invisibility simply matching the hollowness I feel inside? I have to know who I am. I have to know if redemption is possible. So I will use all my power to seek that which terrifies me the most. To truly be seen. And perhaps along the way, slit a few throats of those who do not deserve to be seen. And welcome back to our the Wild Sheep Chase one shot. Um, right before break, our adventurers had been following their talkative sheep, who they've discovered, or at least he says, is actually a powerful wizard who's been turned into a sheep. Um, upon following him, they have come to a large hedge brocade wall, which after going through, they discover the site of a beautiful three-tiered cabin made of intertwined wood with pathways, um, <coughs> and two giant apes that seem to be playing cards in in front of the cabin. Um, do. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the ground that's, level. That's, that's normal. Yeah. We've got you guys, as you come in upon further inspection, you see the, the walkway leading up to the first island which is the intertwined branches, which is covered in dirt and grass, open. And then another bridge leading you up 10 feet higher to this main island here with the large cabin on it. And then with a side bridge and a smaller cabin over here. So, what do you guys do? I had just cast Speak With Animals. Yes. Uh, I had a question that I forgot that was, you know, I had it in my head 10 minutes ago, but now it's gone. Um, so where do we need to go? Well, we're here. This is where we need to go. <laughs> Where's your apprentice? Well, if he's here, I mean, he was here when I left, but that was hours ago. Mm -hmm. Um, should be, should be in the laboratory on the center. That's... That's my cabin there, um, unless unless that crazy fellow's taken my bedroom, and then he could be he could be in my bedroom, which is on that smaller cabin up there. But um, in one of those two buildings, I would assume. Can you ask him which one is the, uh, the the tallest cabin is? Which one the tallest cabin? The is? highest cabin. Like what is it? Yeah, just what what's in that building. Well, the, the main one in the center, that's that's my my laboratory where I would practice my arcane arts. Um, and then 
I would retire back to the cabin that's directly attached to it on the same level that then that would be my bedroom. What's the third one though? The third one is just an open like sometimes I would sit there and I would meditate and I would, I would look off. It's just it made me happy. Gotcha. Um and then, you know, there's there's the worker shack that's back in that corner there and then, you know, of course the lavatory. Um but yeah, that's that's about it. I would assume that he's in the in the lab. And are these are two apes, are they people that he's turned into apes with your with your wand? I would assume so. I can only see so much <clears throat> from the garden. Um, but I do know that every guard that he's hired, he's he's turned into animals. And that, you know, they don't seem to mind it too much. But I have noticed that it's not always the same. Like, sometimes an animal would be around for a little while guarding me, and then they would just be gone. Um, not quite sure what happened to him. I think it'd be hard to rotate out guards if you turn them to animals. My records show that monkeys like bananas. Do you have any bananas? No. I have some rations. Are bananas. they banana flavored? Oat. Are there any guards that are horses? I've not seen that. <laughs> I have not. I've seen real horses when they come pulling the carriage. Perhaps your oat rations would be useful to them. I would. I would keep that in mind. If we come across any horses. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Shall I engage kill move? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Stand by. I mean, I could attempt to climb. Maybe get on the highest one. Do a little sneaky sneaky. See what I find out. If maybe I find his wand, bring it back down, and then we're good to go. Want me to try? All by yourself. I mean, you can climb. Can you? I'll attempt to climb. I'm pretty good at climbing. You can climb with me if you would like. I mean, how good are you at uh, climbing, Ted, 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 Roderick, Ted Roderick? <coughs> My name is Tedronomicon. Right, that's, that's what that said. OX17. Yep. Tedronomicon. Mm-hmm. But you can call me Teddy. Okay, Teddy. Uh, I am proficient at climbing. Oh. Teddy could go with me. You want to take on a powerful wizard? No, I don't. I want to avoid the take on. By going into his. Well, he's the the sheep says he's in the main one. I want to go to the tall platforms. Just see if I can find his wand. I mean, I I agree. The chances aren't high, but we might find something else there. I'm guessing to speak with animals is worn off by this point. It's a ten minute spell. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I have climbing ability. Okay. I got five so things. I am going to turn into a giant bat. <laughs> <laughs> Was that works too? <laughs> um Okay. Does the sheep need to come with us? That's a large beast. Yeah. He's shaking his head no. She was like, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I don't really want to be a giant bag. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's going to be very visible. Like, it's a large creature. Mm-hmm. How about just a regular bat? Let's do a regular bat. And Okay. Up this, up the tree and just kind of looking through and see if I can see anything. Are there windows? 
in this um, main area? There are. There's there, there's some windows. Um, you have. So, the windows are not glass. They seem to be more portholes, okay. of just mm -hmm. larger cracks in the in the roots, more of a diamond shape. Um, roll a um, roll a stealth check. I just want to see. Stealth. Oh, goody. <laughs> That's a seven. That's a seven. Okay. Okay. I think you fly by. It's not uncommon to mm -hmm. have bats in the daytime. So they. Both gorillas kind of stop for a moment and, and look up as they see you fly by, but they don't pay much mind to you. And as you land over on this side of the, um, the main cabin, you kind of climb up and look through the window. And as you do, you see a large table in there with plenty of seating and a kitchen. And you see a fireplace and two walls, it seems to be sectioned off to where if you were to look, you have a wall here and a wall here on the inside and all you see in this area is the kitchen area okay. so far with the table and the and the cookery, but you don't see anybody in there. Okay. Fly around to the, fly around to the other side of the tree. To the other side, okay. As you move over here, you notice that there seems to be a cloaked figure um, pretty flamboyant, multicolored cloak, mm -hmm. just sitting there, toiling over books. Um, he has lots of vials and bottles and beakers and sitting around him and many books and scrolls mm -hmm. and just quietly reading away. Do I see a wand anywhere? You do not see a wand anywhere. Okay. I'm going to fly back around and join the rest of the party here okay. and poof, outside of my bat shape and I uh, kind of re relay the information I I, uh, I I think that our wizard may be on the other side of this tree here well, that's, that's good news so if we could take those gorillas out quickly and efficiently it would be better but again, the gorilla is not easy to take down. I have my dragon breath. I get them both. Well, I, I tend to think that once we engage, we're going to be heard. Right, but I also want to get them like, down immediately, as, or as quick as possible. Shall I engage kill mode? No, no, no stand by. <laughs> You don't stand by the The monkeys will be unable to hear if they are dead. <laughs> right. But we need to know, you know, before you go in and attack, we also need to be right there with you. You know? Are you ready? Then you should follow me. <sighs> fine, fine, <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you really take a step? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Alright, okay, hold on. <laughs> you you guys said that you can climb, right? Yeah. Affirmative. Why don't we just all three or all four and I kinda look at our little sheep friend and see if he nods or Go up to the <clears throat> to the the room with the wizard in it. He doesn't do anything. Doesn't <coughs> really do anything. He's like, <laughs> like just kind of looking to you guys. Like well, that's he seems like he's gonna go <coughs> do whatever you do. Okay, so he's gonna come with us regardless. Um, yeah. I mean, I was hoping to do the stealth mission to get the wand, but I guess that's not. It's a possibility. But we're going to have to climb. Right, right. I mean, but I wasn't intending on taking everybody up there climbing. It was just going to be go and get the wand, get out. But if we're going to engage the wizard, we need everybody. Or we could just. The options are to climb or engage in combat. 
I think so. That seems to be about right. But you believe we should climb? Could we distract Skirilas? Could we send them on their way? Unless you've got an idea on how to do that. Maybe. Uh, what? So it's just trees around? Hmm. It's pretty open. I mean, <coughs> you guys are, are right kind of by, like... So the road comes up off the map and comes up, and it kind of hills up. So you guys are kind of a little bit downset. Mm -hmm. So you're out of eyesight, but there isn't really a lot of cover mm -hmm. as far as that, because everything kind of slopes off, you know, kind of hills up, and then the tree blossoms up off that hill. Okay. And so you guys are kind of down, out of sight a little bit. And that's So a... if you guys were to walk like 10 feet more forward, mm -hmm. you would be level enough for them to see you. Gotcha. So this, the whole area is surrounded by a circle of hedge, right? Correct. And that's... Just woods outside of that? Correct. Inside this hedge line that you guys are in, which is way around this property, because it's like 20 acres. Like, you guys, the only reason you made it up, because there's not a lot of stuff to hide behind, the only reason you made it up this far without being seen is because of elevation change. Because mm -hmm. it slopes up to where that tree is, and there's mm -hmm. like other hills and stuff coming down so you guys are out of sight and so until you move up forward enough to be within eyesight and right now you guys are heads I mean that's how you have to imagine it is you're you're standing but as you mm -hmm. walk forward you can just barely start to see a proposal perhaps I can exit the circle and find a tree to chop down and therefore causing a tree to fall into the hedges thus distracting the monkeys I will then run back through the entrance, and we can use the distraction to climb. We could do that, but I can also, I have Mage Hand. If we can find something within 30 feet, that way no one is over there. I do the distraction, then I pull the hand back to me and whisk nobody leaves the spot. But do you see anything so that I can... So you can use do? Mage Hand to chop down the tree? Not, I can't chop down the tree, but if there's an object or something I can do with my hand... Do y'all see anything or have any ideas what I could do to distract them? Are there any boulders, large rocks? Um, I'm sure you guys can find some, some rocks. Yeah. Or Perhaps you, you could light a fire. <laughs> that would be a distraction. How about I do that, though? <clears throat> I like the idea. Fire would work. You can use this. And I hold out a tinder box. I mean... Not wrong. Can one hand do that? I do not know. Uh, Five pounds per mage hand. Hmm? Five pounds per mage hand. It's a, that's it's a tender box. box. I think. You oh, know. okay. I thought you were still talking about the rocks. Yeah. Use it with one hand. <coughs> Very far away. I have no idea how a tender box works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Actually, is it possible? Do you, is that something that one hand can do? It. Can you like hold? Is this a dexterous hand where it can hold part of it, his pinky finger and ring finger and the other part? And well, so a tinder box, a tinder box is usually has like um, carbon paper, carbon cloth in there. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you lay that down, and you, you still need the spark yeah. Yeah. on it. So it's probably not gonna. Is it something? Perhaps you could set the box down, then strike it with the hand, or perhaps even wedge it. In between two rocks. It seems too difficult for like Mage Hand. Good idea. I don't know if I could do it from this distance. Why don't Why don't you just take your Mage Hand and rustle some bushes? Sure, sure. So okay, I have thirty feet with my hand. And right now, you guys are probably about eighty feet. Eighty from. No, you guys are about sixty feet. Sorry. So you guys are about sixty feet from. From the, the gorillas. gorillas. If I were to, well, if I, if I were to be directly in front of them, on the other side of the hill, could I reach the tree fort on the far right? Your your far left. So you want to come way? You want to try and get around them and come way over here? I want to use my mage hand, like be directly in front of them, on the other side of the hill, invisible to them, and use my hand. To rustle the tree fort. 
Hmm. I don't know if you get close enough to do that because the tree fort's about that's about ten feet in the air. Gotcha. And twenty gotcha. feet in the air, so you'd have to be really close. Rustling okay. leaves with this mage hand, I calculate chances of success at best thirty-eight percent. Never tell however, me the odds, with, kid. <laughs> however, with starting a fire, I calculate the odds of success at ninety-eight point three percent. I mean, just let him chop down a tree, make him go and find a rock and throw it somewhere. We can we can cover him. We can try. Is the is the so as I'm looking at this hill that they're on, we're like we're out of sight basically. Is it like that all the way around? Like if we were to walk, or you know, like if this is like where the center is here and mm-hmm. we're out here, if we were to walk around, are we still kind of staying invisible at the edge? You are. This is this is the closest point because it it levels okay. out a little bit here because this is where the wagons and people normally come up. As it's going to drop down more drastically. Mm-hmm. So you would actually be more hidden being around, but you would be further away. Okay. I reach inside my chest and pull out a torch and say, use the mage hand to take the torch, lit, light it now, and send it around the edge out of sight until it's as far as you can go. Then light the fire. But then we will use the distraction to go the other way and climb up the children's treehouse. But we still have to light it. What do we just can we light it here? We yeah. can light it now. Okay. Yes. And then your can, your invisible hand can carry it over. Let's do it. I what's guess. what's the what's the range on mage hand? Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't you wouldn't get it very far with where you're standing. You right. Would either as a group have to move around. Oh yeah, no, I know. Or I was thinking uh, about throwing it. You know, okay. We're going to talk about going as far as we can this way, lighting it. And it'll take a second for it to light and smoke sure. to start showing. In the meantime, we'll run the other way to, to take advantage of the distraction. Oh, so kind of leave the torch yeah, where you're so at. Like if, we, if we put the torch over here and ran this way, then you know it takes a second for the smoke and the fire and everything to okay. catch their attention. They run that way, we come up and climb. Okay. I okay. guess climb up into here. Yeah. I mean, if they're out that way, though, we could probably just take the um, the ramp. This this has windows or things that we can climb into. Yeah, it's it's twenty foot up. Okay, I'm down with that. Let's, let's do it. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> yep, I say we go for it. Okay. All right. So just double check. You guys are gonna all of you're gonna walk around and try and stay out of sight and well, get yep. over into this near this corner. Light the torch. Yeah, I mean, and I was then and then try to move back over here. My plan was to light it, go ahead, once it's lit, mage hand it, keep it at least thirty feet from me at all times, move around until I get a good like until I feel comfortable, and then chuck it as far as I can. All around mage the hand. edge, like the, over here. How long does mage hand last? It's a cantrip. I, I think, think it's only a minute. I think, you can, I think it's concentration too, isn't it? It says a it's one minute, but it's a cantrip, and it's an action. Okay, if it's a cantrip, then you can keep. So it's like he's going. He's going to take the mage hand, run, go this way, drop yeah. it, yeah, then run back to us, mm-hmm. and we'll all run the other direction. Okay, so I got it. So, so first off, um, make a stealth check. Just okay. you. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> We wasted all our good rolls in the first attack. That's a 10. That's a 10? Okay, so... And you're lighting the torch before you start to move away? Yes. Okay, so... You successfully light the torch quietly. Okay. Okay. And you begin to move around, and there is a hill and a drop-off, and you're staying off the drop-off and moving. And as you... Get you about here, and your torch is about thirty feet in front of you. You you kind of lose track of the level because since it's thirty feet in front of you, it's hard to see. Okay. And it starts to bob into eye level okay. range. Okay. And you suddenly hear some a couple grunts of like, 
and they uh, start to get up and grab the swords and are starting to move this way. Make a perception check because you're kind of out of sight, so you hear it. Yeah. But I don't know if you see them. Perception? Yeah. 19. 19, okay. So they have not seen you, but you do start to see like swords because just as you're looking up over the hill, you're seeing swords coming up mm-hmm. as these two guys are walking this way towards where they see the torch. Okay. I'm keeping a hard I'm, eye on this happening right and now. And what are you doing I'm, you can't see them coming Right, up? so it's a hill. Correct. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to, if there's rocks or sticks, anything that makes noise, basically I'm going to chuck the torch. So if I'm facing this way, I'm going to yep. chuck the torch backwards down the hill so to that hit. Way. Yeah, if I, I'm going to try to hit as, yeah, towards the brush to hit as many rocks or uh, branches on the way down. And then as soon as I do it, hightailing it back to the guys. All right, what did, what did you have for your stealth roll? It was a seven? Ten. The a first ten. roll is a 10. Which got you seen. Um, roll one more stealth roll for me, and I just want to see if you were able to slip. Because they, they know there's a torch over there. Don't roll on the, the dungeon thing no, anymore. we're done with that. That's a 26. 26. Okay. <laughs> they they have moved here and can are now close enough to see down the chute. You do, you are able to leave without them noticing you. Cool. But they do see a lit torch just laying there. And seem to be on high alert. They don't go right now. Them. They're just suspecting. They're not. They're not moving down to to inspect because they can see the torch. But they are hanging out there and no, focused. Let's move with haste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is so, the, are we leaving the sheep here? <coughs> the sheep down. It's up to him. He, I mean, I guess he can't climb. Yeah. Do what he Stay can. sheep. <laughs> He sits. <laughs> <laughs> hide. Yeah, it's better. All right. Correction. Hide. He gets up. Run. Kind of walks. <laughs> I start. I just start running the other direction. Okay. He's you. You see him go. He doesn't go very far. He just kind of moves a little bit away from you guys and tries to stay out of the line of sight. I'm yeah, gonna, like back into the woods or whatever. Like yeah. Into, yeah. So we're going for the little one. This one that's near us. We're gonna climb yeah. that and then take the bridge over yeah. to the big one. All right, Does make a. Um, that's it's kind of a hard climb, so let's make a athletics. Hey, okay. you have decent athletics. Not correct, but I had something I yes. thought that would help with that. Total um, twenty. Um, <coughs> I have twenty-four. Does fast hands help with that? I'm not making that up. Spider climb does. I don't know spider climb. Fast hands so is for a slide of. I think it's for a slide. I had something that helped me with climbing. Unless they changed it or not updated it here. All right, athletics. 18. All right. All three of you make it up to the tree. And are you guys going to do it right here? Are you going to try and circle around a little bit more out of sight? Before I get out of sight. All right. Yeah. So you guys are here and climbing up. And you do make it to the top um, and are on to the landing. And you just have a cabin in front of you and there's no window on the side that you're up um where are you going from here is there a window behind the other side like toward towards this side the the only window is facing here you've got your door on your front and you've got your window right there we can just try to shimmy around the the side so you've got you got your front door here and a window here it's kind of an odd shaped Room, is there a railing on that that walkway? There is no railing on the walkway. It's it's all just open up. Can we see? Like, can one of us peek? Like, just slightly on the edge to see if the monkeys are looking this way. We can try to get in the window. Yeah, absolutely. Um, One monkey is is still watching. The other one has walked not back towards the shop but he has walked down more towards the path <laughs> to kind of look down the road to see if he can see anybody coming up or anybody this? leaving. Do we see this? You guys can see you guys are at a higher vantage point and can see him he cannot see you. Oh he can't point. see us at all. Good. Okay. 
We should enter the window with haste. Oh, not the window, but the door. Because there's not, there's oh, not a yeah. window at our side, but yeah, yeah. the window. Is yeah, the, yeah, the door. So we're going to circle around the front for the door? Yes. I guess bat around back to that. I mean, at least that avoids one monkey's gaze. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just hoping he doesn't look back yeah. up, which he is distracted. Yeah, it's fire. He is catching, just, catching the grass, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. He is he, he is watching. They're they're very wistful, but they Let's don't do look back towards the shop yet. So yeah, I call so all three of you guys go around towards the front, towards the door. It mm-hmm. is currently locked. Okay, I'm gonna try and pick it. Do we need to go into the cabin to get? We need to, to get it. We need to get hidden. I'm gonna try and pick it. All right, is that a dex check? It's a uh, lock pick check. True. It should if you're for for, for Johan, it should be. Uh, Dexterity plus proficiency. Yeah. Where would that be at? Would that be in my? What's well, your dexterity plus thirty? Yeah. So that. Okay. Yeah, and then you. Yeah, you take. Unless your, you took expertise in it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I did. I'm not gonna matter with that. Nope. That is a eight. Ooh. Okay. So, you're a little panicked with the monkey that who you can see and you see his back. He hasn't looked at you yet, but you don't see the other one. And it's got you a little spooked, and you end up breaking your, your lock pick off the mm. lock. Shall I break the door down? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to try to kick the door in. All right. <laughs> Roll strength check. <laughs> Is that athletics? No, just, just strength. Just strength? Uh, it's not very high. Hmm. Twelve. All right, your gigantic robot foot just boom right into the door, and you expected it to swing open, (laughs) but it did not. It just busted right off the hinges, and just there's a moment of silence after the large boom before (laughs) crack on the inside. Um, At this point, (laughs) at this point. Okay. The monkey is now turned around at the sound of the noise <laughs> and <laughs> pushing it, pushing it, and her, pushing it. And her bolt running towards you guys look. As soon as the door falls, you notice it's a bedroom. It is, there's a large king size bed and mattress in there. Um, a bookshelf, a little oh, pot in the corner. Um, a little sparse, actually. Um, a little girly, a little, seems very um, comfy. Mm-hmm. Way too many pillows on the bed. Mm-hmm. Let us get inside. It's um, an ambush. And all you hear is, <laughs> I don't know how monkeys sound. And they are beginning to move up. Oh, I get inside. Yeah, we're, we're inside. We're trying to put inside. the. Oh, yeah. Can I try to put the door back up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wait. <laughs> I w- I'm made the window. Engaging <laughs> stealth mode, and I get like up by the by the door with my swords like this, waiting waiting for something to come through. As soon, okay. as, soon as they go up the ramp, I'm gonna hop out the window. As soon as they go up the ramp, well, like, yeah, You're bailing on the fight. <laughs> no, I'm not leaving you guys. Okay, Joha, he the- pushes bail. <laughs> You're not wrong, <laughs> but I'm not leaving. The the window is locked. Also, you can unlock it. You're on the inside. I'm going to unlock um, it and jump out. <laughs> you can unlock it and jump out. Okay, make an acrobatics check oh. for me. Because you're a good-sized dragon board. Yeah. This is not a large window. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Suck it in. <laughs> acrobatics. <coughs> nope. It's a nine. All right, so you, you've got a head and a shoulder uh-huh. out the window so far, but you're kind of noticing that it's, it's not quite built for a dragon board <laughs> exit escape. Uh-huh. Um, okay. There seems okay. to be a not, size mismatch. <laughs> a little bit. I this is shot. not code. Like, <laughs> it does not mean fire safety. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I have thrilled you. This appears to be belongs to children. This one has come up. This one not designed for you. This one has you come up, and you hear a large bang, bang, bang as he knocks on the front door of this cabin and waits while the other one comes up over to here and stays on the ground. I think we're all trying to, like, go on the other side, like, on either side of the door, trying to kind of keep right out of sight. You said you're preparing, like, mm-hmm. great... I've got... They're, I'm preparing a... They're, the moment that door opens, I want to cast a spell. You guys did push the door back up? 
I tried to. Okay. They and and you manage. You get the door up, and it's it's blocking line of sight, but it is it's not back in place. Yeah. They they can tell that there's obviously people in there. Um, with all the commotion, you notice that the outhouse that was down here. Um, oh, out comes a black bear from the yeah. retrieve. <laughs> <coughs> and does a bear shit in the woods? The yes, wizard. He does. He does not. He does the wizard does now come out. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard has now come out. Um, and the, monk, where the, slime the gorillas are waiting. <laughs> they're, they're not moving in towards the building. They're just standing. And you see... Because I'm assuming you're peeking out the yeah. holes that aren't sealed. Um, you see a wizard with long black hair. <clears throat> very charming. Actually very handsome. Um, he has a white shirt with like large frilly puffs mm-hmm. on the chest area. And this multicolored cloak coming off of him. And as he comes out, he's like, What, what is all this racket? What do you want? I don't pay you to disturb me. And you hear the gorilla grunting and moaning. You can't make out what he says. Um, but he's grunting and groaning towards the wizard. And all you hear is, And you get me? This is what I pay you for. Go deal with it. And the gorilla makes more gorilla noises. And he goes, Fine. I see your point. And he begins to move forward. Is the fire... Up. Are we, is the, can, you're walking, it is did, the it, fire it's like, smoking. It's burning torch. Grass is... Okay. Like, it's green. It's lush. It's not... Okay. You're not catching okay. anything. Um, and he's like... After going, I see your point. He comes over and is like... Who goes there and what are you doing in my bedroom? It is I, Johann the Great. Would you like to explain yourself, Johann, or should I send my guards in after you? This is merely a checkup. We wanted to make sure that your operation was all like above the board. I must say I'm, I'm disappointed what I see so far. <laughs> Inspection? <laughs> Inspection for what? This is my home! Well, obviously, we can't tell you who we're with, because it's a very secret organization. If you know our name, then it's, it all goes downhill. Roll a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> it's a one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Get out of my bedroom! No! Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll get out. Do stay here. I'm gonna walk outside. Okay. All right. I know you hear some grunts and some some groans from the gorilla, and he's and then the wizard is like, "I know there are more of you in there." Uh, I just okay. You caught me. I saw the hedge. I was just trying to see what I could steal. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I, if, you, if I have a fine, I can pay the fine, and I'll be on my way. I did not mean to. The door. I am so very sorry about my lockpick broke when I was trying to get in. I, I broke. The so door. you're a thief. <sighs> yeah, you caught me. Well. I think there's going to be far more than just a slap on the wrist for this. I can pay you. I have money. It was a mistake. I should not have tried and break into your, your treehouse. I see that now. I can I can pay. I have over a hundred gold. <laughs> I did not steal anything. You caught me before I could. Oh, a hundred gold? Yep. Yeah. And you call yourself a thief and that's all the money you make? I mean, I get by. And what were you trying to steal? Who sent you? Nobody sent me. We just heard through the, like... Obviously, somebody sent you to steal my wand, and I don't appreciate you it. You have a wand? I mean, I don't care what wand. <laughs> so you did know about my wand? Uh, mm, no. <laughs> I 
and he is pissed. And next, he ends up taking about two steps back and goes, Boys! Get rid of this riffraff. Okay, can we just talk about this? What Detecting this? elevated <laughs> aggression levels and <laughs> insecurity. <laughs> he personal <is>. level. <laughs> he is reaching back. I can't remember what spells I have. Hold on. Okay. Woo. And he casts Enlarge on the gorilla next to him. And upon casting, the gorilla suddenly <laughs> swells and grows, and his great sword that was gigantic doesn't look so gigantic anymore. It almost seems just like a normal, like, rapier <laughs> in the gorilla's hands. And he moves back behind him as the gorilla comes forward. And let's roll initiative. Oh. It's, it's from the natural one. I don't have to roll that. <laughs> natural 20. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what enlarge does. It adds a plus an adder. So right. adds to your strength. Pretty good. Uh huh. Um, I should look this up before I have enlarge. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's everybody's rolls? Uh, natural twenty. Oh. All right. Yep. And I got a natural one. Ten. Is one total? <laughs> I know it's a three total. Okay. I so am the exact just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's uh, awesome. And he rolled his dice and it was just right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Some goalie locks and the three idiots in there. <laughs> my breath weapon, which, um... Oh yeah, because you're right up in front. Mm -hmm. So you have to roll a dex save, and you have to beat 13. You still take damage, but you have to beat a 13 to take half damage. A 13? Yeah. Okay, and it's a what con save? Dex, dex save. And... No, oh, I have advantage on saving. So, is this just a big platform? No, there's a there's a big house like okay. in the middle. Like it, it you've got a good distance between all the way around it. You know what I mean? Like to walk around. Okay. But I don't have. A, I guess like a draw. Yeah, there's a front. Like a draw. So the wizard is in the like porch area, basically. Yeah, it's got a good walkabout to where you can go. So you guys are in. You guys are in tight, and it's the same one here. Oh god! <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I guess I gotta draw all these buildings and then. Yeah. Sorry, it was it was quick. Okay. <laughs> Check on the ground. Okay. All right. So you were casting his next save. He got fourteen plus. Something. Well, he saves. But I still. Um, okay, so half damage. Sure yeah. The, uh, <laughs> if the breath weapon goes 5 by 30, would that hit the wizard? 5 by 30? Just barely out of range. Alright. Okay. okay. Step forward. Did yeah, that work? Yeah, you have movement, man. Sweet, I'm gonna step forward then. So, Alright. As, as long as the wizard is in range. It, he'll be in range, but you're also putting yourself in melee range of the ape, just so you're aware. I'm doing it. Seven forward, I'm going to hit both of them. Almost good. Um, so half damage is four. 
Oh, I gotta make a save for the wizard. No, no. He does not save. So okay. that's eight. So eight total damage yeah, against the wizard? Damage. Yeah. It's not actually magic, it's just halitosis. <laughs> or seven. <laughs> And then, uh, eight. Alright. Two. Um, I do, with my cunning action, though, I can use disengage. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna back up as far as I can. Not get to the door, I'm gonna go, like, around a little bit. Other this way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right there. Nice. What's your movement? 30 altogether. There you go. Perfect. So, eight and four. Okay. It's lightning, by the way. It's all of them. Okay, so you reach back and breathe out a giant just cloud of smoke, right? Okay. That starts to fill and it envelops the ape and the, uh, the wizard. And as soon as the smoke envelops them, before it starts to dissipate, all of a sudden the lightning just reaches out the electric charge through the smoke speed, speed. and strikes both of them. Um... Eight being gigantic did not take as much right. damage as you may have hoped. Um, all right, and then it is the bear's turn. Bear, he can, yeah, he can climb. <laughs> so he is going to come over and go up this side of the tree, which is big enough for him. He has move it. So he is currently climbing up the tree and just gets to the top, but. At uses up all of his movement. Um, and then, ooh, the wizard is next. Okay. So, the wizard um, grabs his cantation, or his sacred object, which is his necklace, and begins to chant. And then once he does, he begins to float off of the ground and begins to levitate. He's then going to move five and something so that I know he is in the air. Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the night's game brought to you by Red Bull. All right. So he is now <coughs> levitating up in the air and circles around. So is he about 35 so feet in the air? Yeah, a little that. Okay. He can levitate and move his distance. I believe it's either that or 20 feet. So we'll, and he's 20 feet to begin with. So we'll say he's 35. Okay. Uh, so he is now 35 feet in the air. And okay. He's checking his perception to see if he notices a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it is now Doug's turn. Uh, If I don't, I'll, I guess I should get out there and block them off because otherwise they're, you're not going to be able to get out. Well, no, you can shoot out the window. I could. But the window's on the other side, though. I mean, I don't. It's. I mean, look at the wizards. Well, there's a window over here, but there's the doorway here. Yeah. I was worried about him anyway. Yeah, the doorway. Right, but, like, you can't really. Oh, I mean, do what you want. All right. I am going to. Yeah, I'm gonna stay put. Wait, and I'm gonna hold my action with an attack, like my attacks, to, until somebody comes through. Okay, okay, so you're holding your action until someone's within range. Yeah, basically. Okay, basically. and you're not moving. No, because I was wait, I was waiting, like you know, ready to hit somebody who comes through the okay. door. Okay. All right. So you're still waiting for someone to come in. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. hold until that. All right, and then eight two. So this one, he can definitely climb, and his movement is... 
Climb 30. Oh, yeah. So, five, ten. He is up and standing on that edge <laughs> in front of you. Oh, no. The other eight. Yep. This and this pretty. is a small space, but <laughs> he is coming from the door, and he is too large to get in. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but he is, is the door, he's going to, are you guys still holding the door, or did you guys drop it? I don't care about the door. Yeah, no, so I'm it's not, wide open? Yeah, sure. Okay, so he is grabbing the top of the building and leaning in to see one of you guys. So you will get your attack of... Do I get advantage since I was hidden? Yes. You get advantage? Oh, right. So that's two attacks. Oh yeah, I wasn't giving you advantage on your hidden attacks. I forgot about that. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. <What laughs> First one on is 18. Every time you were hidden in the bar, you should have advantage. With I mean, 18, that hits. Yeah, that's how your sneak attack works, because yeah. you're hidden. I knew I had yeah. to, but I, I, like, I completely forgot about that. Jeez, Doug, you remember for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about I've never played. Character. I've never played a rogue. It doesn't come natural. <laughs> so, okay. So, ooh, the first one is twelve damage. Okay. And the second attack. Uh, it's twenty-five to hit. That hits. And six damage. Twelve and six. All right, so as he comes through, you just swing down with your great sword and just slash across his neck. He is bleeding profusely, and with the second attack, he just has enough time to move his arm, and you come up and catch his arm. He then, with what strength he has left, reaches out to just punch you as hard as he can with his fist. And he is... Ooh, um... 23 to hit? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Hits you for seven with his first attack. Okay. And punches again. That's got five with a twenty-one to hit. Yeah. Uh, and does seven damage again. Okay. Bludgeoning damage. Not sure if that matters. And that is the end of his turn. It's an interesting battle song. Do, 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 and now it is Larry's turn. Wait. Or not Larry. Sorry. What's the or yes, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Larry. It's, it's, the, Larry. it's the part of the battle that pans to like the hobbits fighting <laughs> yeah. or something yes. like that. Yes. They're so cute. And then he goes back to oh, the yeah. They try so hard. They're doing their best. Right. Um, it's the sheep and he's like frolicking in the flowers. <laughs> See, now it's back to the war. Yeah. <laughs> so, bonus action, I'm going to do healing word. On myself. <laughs> okay. That's a 1d4 plus 3. So I'm doing a first level. So that's my last first level spell. And I do 7 hit points. And as an action, uh, so what you see, like the, that spore kind of, the spores that are kind of always around me, they, they close in on my body and kind of fuse themselves to my skin and uh, basically give me 20 extra temporary hit points. Ooh, so Very cool. Yeah, that's, right. That was my last All wild right. shape, but uh, at this point, that is oh so worth it. Okay. Because so, that puts me actually above um, my regular hit point total, so i got 20 extra hit points to deal with. And that's my turn. Alright, so that takes us back to the top of the order. Okay. Uh... This gorilla right in front of me, he is, um, I'm assuming like he's, he's pretty much covering. How oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got the door blocked. No, yeah. no, I'm saying like on the platform. Like oh, the one in front of you? Yeah, there's no way around him. But he's like, is he hanging off a little bit? Or no, he... he's he's standing. There's just enough room. He got about five, that five feet from the wall to the edge, and he's just like. But he's, he's secure. He's not going to fall off. No, he's okay. not going to fall off. Okay. I mean, if you push him, maybe. But well, I guess it's worth a shot. All right, I'm gonna shove in there. Huh? I'm going to all right, pull out two daggers, 
and in quick succession, just both at his feet. All right, are you are you attempting to um, like pin his foot to the ground? No, I'm trying okay. to like make him fall off. All right, so All right. like I guess go for the tendons basically to like make his balance. All right, roll for attack. All right. one for the first. <laughs> and the second. Okay. The second one is a 24. Okay, that hits. And then you just, for that, I guess there's no, like, modifier on that one. So, okay, four. So four. Four damage? Yeah. And that's against the one in front of you? Yep. Okay. Um... So you're, he's huge, mm -hmm. and just jumped up this tree with gaping jaw, and you are a little freaked out, and end up dropping your first dagger, and then pull your second dagger with, and throw it, and it does stick him in the foot. Doesn't seem to mind too much. He's a little Fair pissed enough. off. Fair enough. Um, I have fast hands, so I'm going to pick up that dagger and run away. All right. All right. Where are you running to? Are you just gonna circle around the, the building, or are you jumping off? How far away to the ground? You're 20 foot up. You know what? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off and do like a rolling, like try to reduce the damage, basically. All right, uh, roll an acrobatic strike, please. Come on, don't fail me now. What is the acrobatics? Yes. Dreams. For real, that's an actual one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you after picking up your dagger, mm -hmm. you go to like crouch down to jump, and as you crouch down, your feet just slip off. You know, like you weren't quite ready to jump yet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't quite get your composure before you hit the ground. You're gonna hit the ground. You do not sustain any damage, but you are prone. Okay. Could so, be worse. Yeah. Good. So oh, that's, that's annoying. On the ground and All right. Prone. All right. And then that moves to the bear. The bear. The bear. <laughs> um, man, he sees everybody blocked in. <clears throat> Just went up this tree. Let's see, it's two apes. So he's going to. Climb he's going to be here and he's going to wait. And then. And that will end his turn. And then the wizard. This place near the coast? Like, is he that kind of oh. wizard? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, he's not. No. He's, uh, oh. he's, he's gonna he's gonna float over here a little bit closer to you. And he is going to cast uh Ray of Frost on you. Go, 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 go. On who? Which literally on Johan. On Mr. Prone, which I don't know if spells have disadvantage when they're prone. I know um, range, range attacks do. Yeah. I don't Depend. know like a spell. I don't know the official or I would say like if it were me, I would say it was possibly yes. If it's a spell attack, if it's like a save, then it wouldn't because it's yeah. usually like a filling the area type thing. Okay. So, but I'm not going to use you. Thank you. That's what I know. <laughs> you get to make the call. Mm -hmm. You have the power. It is an attack spell, so it is disadvantage. Wait, I have disadvantage or he had disadvantage? I have disadvantage. Why? It's an attack you're spell. Prone. Right. I would, make, I would think I would have disadvantage. No. All right. I'll she take won. it. Yeah, because it's a ranged spell attack. Cool. So, as a ranged attack, and he casts it. Ray of Frost, and you suddenly roll out of the way just in time to not be hit by it. 
Alright, cool, um, cool. A natural one saved? Yeah. And then perception check. For some reason it did. <laughs> um, after noticing you roll away in this direction, it brings his gaze to where uh, he sees shine bright and suddenly gets a look of complete joy on his face as he just begins to smile. And okay. Go, there you are. Cool, cool. That's why you friends are here. And down. that ends his turn. You just saw the sheep. Yep. Yeah. Um. Hmm. And that is your turn, Doug. Hmm. I got an idea. So. Hmm. You know, just. <coughs> well, I'm just gonna hit the big monkey again. <laughs> All right. Hit Donkey Kong. Yes. So first attack. So, 12. 12 is just what you needed. <laughs> 10 damage. Nice. All right. As you zone in on the slash that you've already made on his neck and just come in on that exact spot again and take his head clean off. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. He is down. Cool. Right. And there's a giant hulking body in the doorway. Uh, there's enough room because it's about you know nine foot door, okay. and then he's probably filling about four feet of it. Okay. I am going to then move just outside right here. Okay. And take my second attack on the monkey. <coughs> All right. So my monkey. monkey. But staying so that anybody passing by the door would still catch Watch your me. Dies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He fell off his can of floppy. <laughs> Gives you wings. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> uh, no, that's eleven. That's eleven. That is a miss. Uh, so you swing towards the. I'm going to take relax. my bonus action to use a uh, second wind. Okay. Nice. Uh, heal myself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Yeah. Alright. So that's 8 plus 5 is 13. Yeah. Almost to full. Alright, as you, as you took your second swing on him, he looked down to find the the knife sticking out of his foot, and when he looked down, it was right as your <laughs> leg came over, because he didn't quite notice you there yet. Mm. Um, but he now notices you, surprised, as you and take a nice deep breath for your second wind. <laughs> I don't breathe, though. <laughs> it's like, crank up. You mimic a breath. Because <laughs> you've been studying hard. There you go. Uh, so it is now that ape's turn. So he's going to turn around and take his first swing at you, which is natural 20. Oh. <laughs> Bye-bye hit points you just mm. got. 25 to hit. Oh, yeah. Our okay. luck has turned drastically. Um, <laughs> and that is a D6. So that's four plus six. So that is seven. Okay. Total. And then, because he got a two on the die, so not very good. Um, and then he takes his second attack at you, which is a 14. And does not hit. <clears throat> All right. After that, he's then... He's going to stay right there with you. Um, the bear already went. Um, so My now turn. it is Larry's turn. Right. I'm going to move up to the window. To the window? From the wall. To the wall! Are <laughs> and... you going to jump down and fall? <laughs> ow, 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 okay, ow, ow. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to let you rule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you rule on this. Uh, I've got my Halo Spores thing, which is that reaction. Sure. That whenever, so he's... There's a wall There's a wall on the outside, of, like between me and the, the gorilla right now. Yep. Would he still be moving into my... Because it's within 10 feet. Um, and it's, I have to see him. I can see him through the window. 
So <laughs> it's, it's up to you what you want to roll on that. <laughs> if you say no, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say no on okay. that one just because you would be able to get him, since you have line of sight, you'd be able to get him with a ranged attack, yeah. but not a melee. And I would consider, you consider the, the not a melee, melee because okay. it's within melee range. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to reach out, and you're going to see like a, a just a whole thing of spores leave my hand towards the wizard, and I'm casting blindness on him. Oh! oh. Second level spell. Perfect, What, lady. what is the save? Uh, 14. Con, con save, 14. Oh, I hope you blind them. It's gonna be so good. Twenty. Oh! Nineteen on the die. Damn. Oh, Nineteen on the die. Oh. Dang, that's a good idea. Yeah. That would have been. I still got two more attempts. That would have been tricky. Um, um, uh, is that are you? You only used half your movement, or not? Yeah, and I'm. Movement, so. I'm not leaving that room right now. Okay. Uh, I think that's. Yeah, I'm good. You, sir. Standing up. Okay, that's half your movement. Yep. And the wizard is 35 feet above me. Correct. Taking both daggers right out. All right. Okay, first one. 22. 22. 22 hits. And that's just normal, I'm assuming. Not sneak attack or anything. Nope. Uh, that's three. Yeah, three. That's a good battle. Good battle. Yeah, one. Yeah. So you hit me for three. And then the other, the other attack was an actual one. The other one missed? Yeah. Okay. Fifth one. <laughs> yeah. Dude. That's impressive. That is impressive. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's great. How you doing with it, Will Wheaton? Okay. Yeah, for so, me. What, would you like one of my? <laughs> Don't Maybe. let him dice. You'll never roll one <laughs> again. Your, your first dagger does graze him right in the cheek, and the, the smile that he had staring at the sheet suddenly fades as he rests eyes upon you. Um, and it is the bear's turn. Da bear. Da bear. And he's going to run up and take his first swing on you, sir. Uh, which is a natural one. This uh, second swing is natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with tonight? So many oh, no, 20s man. and 1s. So uh, he yeah. misses with the first claw attack. It's a 25 with that claw attack. And so that is a... Uh, that is a 18 plus 4. So that is 22 points of damage. Oh, gosh. This okay. 16. No, sorry, 20 damage. Did you say 18 plus 4? Yeah, but I, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was a 4 and a 6, and I doubled those. Okay. I just doubled them. Is the bear within 10 feet of me? 15. 15, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep, okay. Um, so you, but you're still up? <clears throat> yep. Okay, that's the end of his turn. And it's the wizard's turn. Hmm. He is, looks from you and looks to the sheet. Looks to you and looks to the sheet. He does not like being injured. Um, he is going to cast Ray of Frost again. Okay. Which is a 15 to hit. Okay, I'm going to use that hit. I'm going to use Uncanny Dodge. Okay, is that a uh, complete miss or is it half damage? Half damage. Half damage. So that is seven damage, so half that would be three. Alright, so he does three damage and then he's down to eight. No, he's done. Already done some damage to the eight, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him. Twenty-four. There you is go. Eleven damage. Nice. Oh. 
how do you want to do this? Because that's the that's all he's got. <laughs> he's exactly eleven hit points. Out. Um, I actually just want to like basically take him by the throat and shove him off the uh, off of the off of the thing off the platform. All right, so you hit him, and it is like slow motion, just backfall all the way. Style. And like just hits a large rock with his head as he hits the ground and he's just done. Nice. Like, so he's out. And then I uh, twirl around for my second attack. Just on the out, bear? Coming on the bear. Alright. That is a 12. <laughs> that hits. Wow. Alright. He's kind of lumbery. Mm-hmm. Alright. So that's a uh, real eight. estate there to hit. Is it eight to hit? Mm-hmm. Or no, eight damage, because yeah. you hit with the 12. Yeah, oh, sorry, eight damage, yeah. Okay. So, all right. All right. Um, My turn. The apes are gone. Yeah, the apes are gone, so it's right, right, right. Do it each out the window one more time. Go, well, not one more time. Going for blindness again on the wizard. All right. So. 14, a con save. Oh, even rolling tonight. 16. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to move over just one, uh, five feet to get within 10 feet of the bear. All right, and that does how much damage? Uh, it is, oh, it's, since I've got the uh, symbiotic entity, which is also gave me the 20 hit, extra hit points. That's cool, man. Dumb, I've never seen double damage stuff. dice, which is only a D4, but. Still. Yeah, that's cool. and then I add an extra D6 of poison damage on top of that. Two. So that's three points of slash, no, necrotic damage. That's three points of necrotic. And then six. Mm, one point of poison damage. <laughs> so how much total? Uh, four points. Yeah, four points. Four points, okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to move back towards the window. All right. Yeah, and it's like that's fine. Well, actually, that was since that was the end of the round. You, sir. Alright, I, I have never. Done it again the top of the round. Yeah. I've never held an action, so I'm a little curious how it works. Can I. Can I basically hide and hold my attack? Can I use stealth and hold my attack? So you want to move and hide mm-hmm. and hold your attack until what? I want to go around to where the tree is and wait for the wizard to come after the sheep. Make sure, so when he's in range, I'll be hidden. So you want to move yourself out of range and then hold your action until the wizard moves into your range. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You do that. Sweet. So your movement was... 30. 30? 30. 30. 30. So I'll put you right there. Do you want to wait right here on the corner? One more space over. One more space? Yeah. All right. A little stealth check for me, please. Actually, for bonus action high. Is ice cream dice or... This is no reflection on your dice. Um, four, 14? Or plus 8? Yeah, 14. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. You are hidden and, and you're I, holding your action. I got two daggers you're ready to go. an attack. Yep. Okay. Uh, which would be, but only one attack. Because you have to use your bonus action to hide. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Uh, your attack action lets you take two. Oh, or your, your action lets you take two attacks. Hold on. What I think is this? How does it work? Maybe, like I said, I'm going to play the rest. If you're playing offhand attack, I think technically that would be the bonus action to do an offhand attack. So that's check your, oh, check your action. Be check oh, your reaction. So, like, mine is, like, it's actually one attack, it's two attacks. Yeah. So I can hold that, but I, but I think, he, he's, I think a rogue can get it as a feat, but not yeah. as a <clears throat> It says whenever I attack with a light melee weapon, that's, I can use the other, I can use... I can use a bonus action, so yeah. Okay. I use so my yeah, bonus so you action. Just have you don't have two attacks for you. Two, you can't use yeah. your action. It's not to extra attack. attack. It's, it's, it's my bonus yeah, action. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so one dagger, ready to go. So that now moves to the bear. Which is hurting pretty bad, but he is still taking his attacks on you, sir. Um, which is a twenty to hit. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope I can roll below a 20. <laughs> Dude, I'm, these are my new dice, by the way. This is the really first christening good. of these dice, and I like them. I'm just um, allowing them to migrate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cover you up, Danny. You just bring them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the dice he's using. <laughs> Dude, I just rolled an 8 on a d8, too. So that is 8. <laughs> so that is 12 damage. That was first attack. <laughs> Take drama con. And he's gonna take a second swing at you. This is seven. <laughs> okay. Finally. So I assume that's a miss. Luckily. <laughs> All right. Just barely. <laughs> barely. So, dead, dead. It's I didn't wizard's turn. That that's awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm so into with puns, I can just make them my own accent. <laughs> so the wizard. Need to. The wizard is seeing, seeing the sheep, but seeing <laughs> the dead. Apes and the very injured bear. Do I go after the sheep? He would not go after the sheep. He's going to cast Expeditious. Healing on me. (laughs) He's going to cast Expeditious Retreat upon himself, which, if I remember right, I think it doubles his movement speed. Sorry, I guess I should have looked this up before I casting it. Retreat. It does. It does. It allows you to move at an incredible pace, but it does not tell me what that pace is. So we're gonna dash, double dash. He's going to stay up levitation because that's not uh, that is a concentration. So he's gonna lower himself to the ground and cast expeditious retreat. Underneath the bridge, and moving this way. Hmm. Okay. And that brings us to Doug. Okay. Man, what a pansy. Right? <laughs> what a pansy. Is he still 30 in the air or is he on the ground? He's on the ground now. Seems to be a lover, not a fighter. Everybody else does does his dirty work. He's still up. He's hurting. Right. He's still up. Another one? Very bloody. Twelve. That hits. <laughs> right. And ten damage. Whoa, all right. He is bleeding out, but barely on his feet. <laughs> hey, make, make By, uh, yeah. yep, red. Uh, Larry, it is your turn. All right. I am going to move up into his range. Uh, actually, just one, uh, you know, up one square. You're just going to walk forward? Just one. Just walk towards him? Yeah, right. just the one. I don't want to get within melee with him. Um, so that's going to bring up the uh, that's okay. symbiotic entity. Four, five points of necrotic. And so five points of poison, so ten points altogether. So how do you walk towards him? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Sporadically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well that's, done. Yep, that's exactly how it's done. <laughs> uh, kind of do the, the, the palms out, uh, approach just walking up, and then 
the spores just whoosh, and just kind of out. wrap all around them and like consume them in okay, the, and the spore moment, cloud. The moment they wrap around them, you lose visibility on them. And as they disperse and move back towards you, it seems as though nothing has happened until the, you notice that his eyes and the life in them has faded and he just flops to the ground, dead. So let's see, I've got 15 more feet of movement. Uh, but the main part, those are all rooms, like separated by the dots. Those, like, it's yeah, yeah, well, not on the outside, but you know. Right. Inside. Uh, I'm going to run through across the bridge and into the room and start making my way out. Try to figure out how to get out to the other side. Going through, through I have 25 the more feet of movement. You have 25? Yeah, how about so full 30? So you're right here. Okay. All right, and then. Sir. Okay, I'm gonna assume that I have an idea where he is. Yeah, you wouldn't have any idea where he is. You saw him take off, but he's out of sight from you. Alright, well, so. These two had a little bit better vantage point and saw him run. Mm -hmm. But once he got under the bridge, that was, that was it. You're assuming. I'm not gonna take us out of combat yet because he's not completely going away, but he is out of sight. I'm just gonna take oh, off. I'm sorry, I meant to. Oh no, he was. He was dead. Never mind, sorry. I got 30 feet, so I'm going to go, I guess, 30 feet out where the wizard used to be. So back the direction you came? Yeah. Kind of looking around the sky, trying to find him. <laughs> I'm going to bet you guys, like, where is he? Went to that direction. I'm going to take, I'm going to use my dash, go 30 feet more. All right. Okay. You are now in the line of sight and you can Ooh. see him. You can also use your, your uh, Initiate kill mode. And you can dash you can dash as bonus action. So that's movement and bonus action. You still have an action. Yeah. But you can move some more if you want to. Yeah, you could and can pretty much catch up to him. But I don't have any attacks. Right. Correct. <laughs> you don't have your attack? I have an attack. Oh, so he, 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 used yeah, action. He, has, he has an action. He's used movement and bonus action. How far away is he? About 60. I wonder, well, I, can't, I wonder if I can't use my mage hand on him. Oh. But I've gone as far as I can. If I move any further, I can't do any more actions. Alright, I got I think I got one more dagger. I'm gonna chuck it at him. Alright. That is 13. Yeah, just enough. <laughs> Sweet. Um, oh, do I get um, uh, advantage or sneak attack? Um, not on this one because you're not hidden and he's not engaged or okay. anything else. Just regular? Yeah. Uh, three. Damage. All right. All right, you heave your knife and you do catch him. Ah, but he just keeps, keeps on moving forward because it is now his turn. And he's going to find Yep, and he finds himself a door and shuts himself inside Take the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, shuts, was fun. shuts himself inside this cabin over here. Okay. And for now, we will drop combat for a little bit. Well, I take off that way. So you guys are all yeah, I'm following up? Are you yeah, coming ground level? All heading that way. Yep. Alright. At this point, Shall I open sheep, the door. The wait, sheep has moved wait. over a little bit too. He's not getting too close, but he's coming. I'm gonna circle close around to watch. the other side. Circle around the other side? Okay. That's layer technically. Oh, sorry. Alright. Is there windows on this? Just the door. Shall I open the door? By all means. Alright, roll a uh, athletics check. 17. Alright, so you guys all make your way over after seeing him lock himself inside and you 
talk amongst yourselves for a little bit and you circle around and you get ready to kick down the door. And the moment that your foot comes up and it goes to hit, you kick the door, it doesn't break down, but you hear a much, much louder boom than you were expecting. And it doesn't quite sound like your foot. Okay, and then you start to hear more creaking. And more, until crack, boom, and the whole roof <laughs> of this shed just comes busting off. And when you see a giant dragon type thing with Nook riding on it, and it looks like a dragon, but not like a dragon you've ever seen before. The entire dragon seems to be made of wood looking skin, mm -hmm. and it has like long bed sheets for its wings, and it's got um, bedposts, claws coming out, and a giant pillow that looks rock hard on its tail. <laughs> and it's flying through the air. It's a children's dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Treehouse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. And um, once he pops up, he just screams at all three of you going, I will be rid of you! And we will, it was his action to bust through the roof, and so we will pop back into keeping the same initiative order. Keeping the same initiative order. And that would be me first. Alright, so where, where is the dragon now? The dragon is hovering yeah, above right. the roof of this building. He is probably about 30 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. 30 feet in the air. Yep. I. That's true. That's true. I'm going to use. What? I'm going to use my mage hand. And. I can't attack with mage hand, can I? No, that's a different, that's a different spell. Mage, mage hand can only live like an interim of like 5 pounds. Mine says 10 pounds. About 10 pounds, sorry. Um, what am I going to do with That makes the difference. <laughs> He's got like a little necklace, right? Yeah, he's got his arcane focus. I'm gonna use my mage and grab the necklace and just like pull as hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging it. Okay. Um, nice. I gotta think about that because I'm like, ten pounds of force I should snap a necklace. Like either that or knock him on the dragon. Either way, I'm happy. So make. Make an attack roll. Um, use my spell modifier. Yeah, use your spell modifier. Actually, wait, what is my spell modifier? Plus three, probably. Is that right? Does it not give it to you? Well, I mean, well, it's, it's for maybe arcane trickster, or whatever. And I don't it's, have it's arcane trickster. trickster. No, you don't. Uh, -uh I got the um, magic initiate. Uh, I've yeah. dragon mark. Oh, that uh, okay. That's okay. Hold on, let me pull up. Where's me change? Uh, oh, I gotta go to spells. Hold yeah. on, sorry. Spells. I should tell it at the top. Mage hand. Is it saving for him? Doesn't say anything. For for like a spell attack modifier. That's right. We'll we'll say we'll say you got it, and we'll make a um, a contest or a contested check where <coughs> I use um, my strength to try and not let you break it, and you can use your whatever your spell modifier is. I don't. I didn't have a spell you modifier. Have. Should tell you on the aberrant dra dragon mark, like what, how you calculate your spell. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your casting ability? The charisma is it? No. I don't know where yeah, it's a wood doesn't have. There's one. Where do I find my dragon mark? Alright. DC of 10 plus spell level plus your charisma modifier. There you go. Charisma? It's a, it has a cantrip, so I guess it would be a spell level. Yep. 
So I'll use my strength modifier, which is not good for a wizard, yeah, and you use your wizard spell, which is probably not good for a rogue. So it'll be good. Wait, I'm using crystal, right? Yep. Correct. <laughs> Twelve. Nineteen. Hmm. With a negative one. Me so too. That's not a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> later. So you Man, do reach such up. A good idea. Yeah. So you do reach up, and you grab it, and go to yank down, but he like grabs it at the same time as your mage hand, and it's just not enough to break away from him. Um, does mage hand bonus action? It's the cantrip. Yeah. Okay, and so that brings it to there, right? I have its stats. Ha! So it is going to make a it is gonna swoop down closer to you after that little trick and it's gonna try and make a bite attack on you. Okay. And that's Must a 17 to hit. Yeah, uncanny dodge, by the way. Probably good, because this is 2d10 plus 4. Okay. So, make sure I roll the right dice. <laughs> so that's 14 to hit. That's 14 damage. Or 14 damage. Halved. Halved, so that's 7. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All right, and then... Nook is going to cast Ray of Frost on me as well. Can I still use well, it's the, 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 the wizard. wizard. Yeah. So it was the way I thought his action I thought his turn was to was to break through. It was, yeah. and then we went to the top of the order and then it started. Oh, okay, so it didn't again. start with him in the cycle. Correct. Oh, okay. So that's a 20 to hit. Yep. Can I use that again? Okay, God. Yeah, uh, you only get one reaction per round. Yep. Um, okay. Just a That's six damage. Okay. okay. As he reaches down. So as he's going down, as the Wavering's going down to bite you, he reaches out and okay. yeah. chilling frost comes out of his hand and creeps across your body. And that is Doug's turn. Okay. I'm gonna run up and hit the wizard. All right, he's he's low enough to hit, so he should just be within the range. But you're gonna have to, you're probably have to move around over here to get him. Oh. Just because it's a large dragon, so coming from the back, you probably be able to get to. All right, yep, hitting him. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Deck saver. And seven damage. Seven damage? Okay. Hitting again. Hold on. That's he's gotta make a deck save, right? For concentration deck save or is that? Oh for a, no it's a constitution save. Constitution if you're trying to maintain save. concentration on spell, yeah. Okay. Second attack. Fifteen. Hits. Um, that's, uh, that's plus, uh, 10 damage. 10 damage? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay, as you strike him, you get a gash across the front of his chest, and he goes, ah! And the next thing you know is as he's leaning back from the attack, he continues to lean back and falls onto a rubble <laughs> of broken bed parts. <laughs> as Lost concentration. As the waver, yes. <laughs> as the waver turns back into it is its bed that it was <coughs> magically made out of, and uh, he hits the ground and is now prone. Um, and that okay. Both your attacks. So, and I am going to action action surge. Take two more attacks at him. <laughs> All right. At advantage since he's uh, on the ground. Oh, yep. Yo, dude. Execution mode. <laughs> <laughs> Engaged. <laughs> All right, so 22 to hit. Mm-hmm. That's uh, 12 damage. Still up. What? 
guy's beefy. 17. That hits. And then 9 damage. He is barely holding on. He is, <laughs> he is hurting. As you bring down your sword, he's just barely moving enough to miss vital points. <laughs> you were, uh, I wasn't happy out, down. but... Uh... <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, but he is barely holding on to yeah, consciousness. I'll have something if, if we if it gets to that point. I have something to help out. Uh, so I guess it's my turn now. It is your turn. Thunder wave, third it level. Gosh. I'm I'm blow, I, I'm going to go hardcore with it. So that's uh. How close are you getting? Because that's an area of attack. Right? Yeah, for both. Yeah, I want to I want to <laughs> step in like and kind of step in front of him and face him, and not my teammates. Oh, it's a cone? It's not radial? I, I think it's a 15, 15 foot cube originating from from where you, whatever, where you want it. Creature, any 15 foot cube. Yep. Okay, for some reason I thought it went out. Well, no, it's it's more concentrated. Like, there's a little bit more. So, is it? Okay. Yeah, 15 feet from, originating from me. Right. So it's sure. It's still. So you're gonna move in into the rubble building and yep. just and while he's on the ground and all right. So is that a save? Clap or my attack? hands. Uh, is a save uh, what for half damage, damage, or is that just a save for Constitution saving back? throw for a fourteen? Hits it fourteen. Damn. Uh, wizard. <laughs> I still get the roll forty-eight. So oh, for and he takes half damage. Yeah. So. Um, Three, eight, nine. It's four damage. Four damage. So as you come in and just reach back and slam your hands together, this loud cracking boom roars out. And it sounds really loud, and you're surprised at how much force comes from it. Yeah. Because it actually launches him. And Ten feet away. It launches him, and he, like... Ragdoll turns and twists in the air, mm-hmm. and one of the um, broken bedposts is just barely s- slid up at an angle, and it just <laughs> skewers <laughs> right through him. <laughs> He's impaled. And he is gone. He is <laughs> All right. Gone. You weren't lying when you said he was like, He, like, he had exactly four hit points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're exact. <laughs> yeah. So, precise. Yeah, precise. So that was very well done. Precisely. And uh, that is the end of combat, gentlemen. Execution complete. <laughs> All right. Back to our regular. I guess music. Uh, I will. Uh, I will search the body, the wizard's body. Um, upon searching the wizard's body, you find a wand. A. Got the wand. A long. A long branch with another branch twisted around it and coming through. Um, you're probably the most magically inclined, right? Sure. So, I mean, it's, to it's you a, it's just a wand. You don't quite know what it is. Gotcha. But it's going to be a different type of magic because mine's like nature based, and I'm willing to bet this wand is more arcane. Definitely. Spore. I can try. Want to take a look? Magical. Yeah. <laughs> have probably the best chance but I do I need to roll like an arcane check or um, if, if he gives it to you to check out yeah I think we're uh, what's your arcane come on my arcane plus two we're probably the same so okay make an arcane check 15 15 yep. okay you you take the wand and just from holding it in your hand, you can you can sense it has a lot of transmutational properties, mm-hmm. but you're still not quite sure what the wand <coughs> is. Um, at this point, you shine take bright it with us and examine it on our journeys. Shine, <laughs> shine bright comes over and starts to nudge you in the leg since you're holding the wand. Uh-huh. And Are you ready to be sheared? <laughs> I believe that's ah, a yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sword out again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what to do with it, like what spell to cast, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so 
just gonna just, just gonna cast the wand. The switch. Try and and it. Him. There's nothing else on the body. Oh yeah, he had um, some pansies. That makes sense. He had some flowers. <laughs> okay. Just picked flowers in his pocket. Like I don't know why. Um, okay. <laughs> he he had about fifty gold on him. Pocket that. Um, and other than that, he was he was packing pretty light, man. He, he had the wand and felt that's. Shall I attempt to use the wand on you? And then I will, uh, I will try to use it on our sheep friend here. Okay. <coughs> um, do you, roll do you, do you a d twenty with um, an arcane modifier. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, where's my chart? Hold on. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, ready ahead. for it. I'm gonna grab the pansies and step back. <laughs> it's a seven. <laughs> it's a seven. Uh huh. You said D twenty plus my arcana. Uh huh. Oh no. Sorry. If the sheep dies, we can take his belongings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is true. So yes, we can. As you concentrate mm-hmm. and reach out the wand, mm-hmm. you're not quite sure what the, the magical words would be, but you just try to feel it out, and you strike with the wand towards him. And the moment you do, all you two see is a large flash from the wand, and just poof, and all you see is white, and as your vision starts to come back, you notice the wand on the ground <laughs> next to a puddle. Of ooze. <laughs> is he gone? <laughs> he died, sir. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Whoa. Yes. Um. Shine bright runs up and grabs the wand in his mouth and is <coughs> attempting to. No. Run. I try to grab it from him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Roll an attack roll. To see an attack roll. Yeah, so uh, for a grapple. Right. Considering a grapple. <laughs> if you can get him, he's not going to outstrike 23. you. 23. Oh, yeah. No, you grab him. <laughs> you got him. Are you grabbing the wand? This is dangerous. Him? The wand. Okay, you have now picked him up. And you have a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it. <laughs> okay, he falls off. And this the only dangerous. Per- the only person you Danger. Have Danger. Is animal talk. And I, you, I the reason I couldn't do anything was because I used all those spell slots. Oh. Yeah. Perhaps if we use the wand on the puddle. He is just headbutting you. I believe I have discovered where the puddle came from before. Yeah, this makes more sense. Our friend has turned into excrement. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Karamakan. I am not touching that wand. I do not have magic skills. I am already touching oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just headbutting you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick the sheep. <laughs> make it, make it a <laughs> Hold on, I have an unarmed strike. It's just, it's a D4 plus plus your strength. It would be, the, but roll the, your D20 to see if you hit first. Nineteen. Nineteen, it hits. So roll a D4 plus your strength modifier. Where's my attacks? Because. Yeah, oh yeah, it just says okay. Yeah, the power. <laughs> one. One? Okay, you kick him and it <laughs> he uh he stops for a minute. <laughs> but he hasn't gone anywhere. He's 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 still hanging out. Hold on. I still believe he is ready to be sheared. <laughs> At this point, I s I've never tried to stop you in the first place, so I just you know <laughs> hit the one person that was on this sheep side is <laughs> a puzzle. <laughs> I mean, did do you think he? Do you think the sheep did this? Like, is he behind this somehow? Inconclusive evidence. Use the word. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> it's the wind. Uh, I mean, I don't really care about the sheep. I'd rather have Spore come back. Well, perhaps the wand can bring it back. 
I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know how these things work. It is logical to conclude that if the wand could take him away, the wand could bring him back. Like a control Z kind of thing? We can give it a shot. I... Let's just do the one. Just do I the do one. not know how to it's control not. any letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Sorry, it's command Z, but either way, same thing. I do not know how to command any letters of the alphabet, it's, except it's, in speech. It's an old Dragonborn joke you wouldn't get it. Anyway. I am not Dragonborn. I, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, if you want to I guess use it on the puddle I don't know what else to do commencing wand usage <laughs> okay trying to use it on the puddle okay. <laughs> roll roll a d20 plus arcana plus arcana yep uh, that's 17 ooh ooh okay um <laughs> How this works. <laughs> <laughs> you, However you want to work, Danny. Uh, what are you? What are you trying to uh, transmute the puddle into? Him. I'm trying to bring him back. <laughs> Man, stump um, the DM. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hold on. So you concentrate and you cast a spell and the puddle begins to swirl and change and increase and what you see before you looks more similar to a like gooey marionette of a <laughs> <Okay>. turtle. <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> true polymorph can only, <laughs> it has to be relatively the same amount of matter that you're turning. Well, it should and be. He it, turned into the goo. He, he did melt. Um, that's kind of a backfire <laughs> <laughs> of the wand. So, just to help you guys kind of understand what's going on is it's, it's a modified wand of true polymorph. True polymorph okay. could change something, right? But true uh -huh. polymorph is a ninth level spell. Uh -huh. And even if you were to find a wand, it might have one casting with yeah, it because yeah, it is yeah. a super strong spell. Right, right. right. Charges. This stuff. guy has made a, like, broken the fourth wall, mm -hmm. okay, and found a philosopher's stone, basically, and has made a modified wand of polymorph. He can cast true polymorph as many times as he wants with that wand. There's <coughs> only charges. But cost of that is that there's a chance there's a 50 50 chance that it's going to kill the person who casts yeah, it see. anything lower than a 10 is yeah, going yeah. to backfire and kill the user anything lower than anything above a 10 and lower than a 15 is going to kill the person it's cast it on <laughs> anything over 15 is a success mm. and so you succeeded in true polymorph but true polymorph will not bring the dead back to life. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be about the same matter size. But is this goop turtle that I just created a lot? <laughs> turtle soup. It's not a lot. It's dead. Okay. Like, that's the remnant. So I was trying to give you guys clues because the ooze in the guard shack was a guard that he tried to polymorph right. into an animal uh -huh. and, it, and he rolled a 13. Mm -hmm. And so it killed the guard. I can't believe he had this many successes, like with all these animals. He's got a really high arcana, mm -hmm. and so it kind of pushes the scales a little bit when he mm -hmm. when he rolls. Um, so there is an animated <laughs> doll, and like true polymorph is true polymorph. Like it can't be undone. So you now have like a pet <laughs> <laughs> goo turtle, a goo turtle. <laughs> You have a pet turtle. <laughs> That's a pet turtle. <laughs> like, and this is amazing. I don't, I don't exactly know the intelligence level. Like, I'll have to. I'll let you know. I'll look this up because I don't know how. I don't know how. Like, it's dead. Yeah. So he can turn the bed into a dragon. 
Like, it's gonna, like, he can control it with his concentration. I, I think it, I think it does die if you lose concentration, but for concentration, you're good, man. Like, you now have a little toy. I know a robot with an anim- who has animated the go- the, the liquefied remains oh, gotta, of gotta, my gotta, friend. <laughs> I have an accidental necromancer. <laughs> there you go. Um, the sheep's still headbutting you. He wants his wand, but... Um, fine. I will... I will give him what he wants. And I put the wand into my into my bag and hold the sheep down and start shearing it. With my <laughs> sp- <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh! He is very mad. Where'd you put the wand? Uh, just like in, well, I imagine my chest cavity being like a place where I store stuff. I don't know if that's... So it's like closed? Yeah. Like Tin Man style? Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Because he, he wants his wand. He's taking it. He's not happy, but he's not running. Um, and you now have a shade. <laughs> he's are cheap. Um, there. Isn't that better? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we... Do we have anything left to do here? Well, we might as well search the treehouse, see if we can find anything to sell, go back to town, and see if we can find a wizard who can help us out. And perhaps we can sell the sheep. Yes. Yeah, now you are thinking. <laughs> oh, a dinner. talking sheep should get... Ooh, a talking sheep. Price. Oh, he's not talking, though. Ma! <laughs> Shut point. up, you! <laughs> Tis a valid point. Hmm. Well, I go and take a rope out of my my bag and tie it around the sheep's <laughs> and tie the very tie it sadly the he lets you. He 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 feels you are his only chance of getting back, and so he's gonna tag along. Um, I feel so bad, but I, so, I don't know the difference. Yeah, like, you are now walking. <laughs> You have a pet sheep and, and at a this time, goo turtle. So <laughs> while you're holding while you're holding the rope for the sheep, your your little ooze turtle walks up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> to hold your other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take it? Yeah. Okay, you now roll it back with the little ooze turtle. And, and it's sheep on a leash. Mr. Robot. This is amazing. This is the best career ever. <laughs> the most ridiculous thing. Oh. Your sister is watching. She needs to draw this. Oh. <laughs> no, right? Uh, well, so I guess we're checking the house out. Yeah, I'm going to search the house for any valuables we can sell. <laughs> or use. I'm just like, he's basically amoral, and I don't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> The one, the one good guy. The one guy who would have changed everything. Yep. It's now my pet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so the spell does become permanent, uh, and you are no longer in control of the creature. It might remain friendly to you. So the spell's duration. It doesn't really go into, but you, true polymorph. Like yeah. After a certain time, it becomes permanent. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. like, you cast it, and you. Can have to control it and tell it what to do, but after we'll say after it's an like hour, it, mm-hmm. if you're nice to it during that hour, it becomes permanent and it well, is now. Gonna be nice to yeah, it. yeah. yeah. So, not to. so you, yeah, and if, as long as you're nice to it, he's now your new best friend. <laughs> you have a sheet <laughs> and, and a goo turtle. Acts on its own, all that kind of stuff. So you want to keep him? I can write up some stats him. for him. Now um, my pet. One of my pet. A robot's pet. <laughs> You have a companion, two companions now. <laughs> Shaved, <laughs> like stripped of dignity. <laughs> so, I think that's a good spot. Yeah, and, probably. Uh, yeah. Oh as, my gosh. as, are you gonna go check the tree fort? Yeah. All right. So you, while you're busy Find checking the tree gold fort, gold and legendary items. And, you know. No, there's crap. There's, <laughs> there's a few uh, scrolls of animal speak up there, but. Okay. I'll tell None of you know how to use them. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, and you just find yourself 
<laughs> slowly walking with a sheet <laughs> and your friend over the dead body of apes and bears. <laughs> and like, poor lizards, man. And that is where we will end our adventure. <laughs> Good job, Danny. All right. Awesome job. Thanks. Everybody, so much for joining oh us. Uh, I know we had some rough spots, but it's yeah, pretty good for. Out. <laughs> I think, think we did pretty you. good for no prep time. Um, if oh you're curious, God. this adventure is called The Wild Sheep Chase and is a free PDF that you can look up. I cannot remember who who wrote it, but they did a beautiful job. It was tons of fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, so feel free to. To have fun and enjoy. Oh, man. So, yeah, and thank you. Yeah, Danny did an amazing oh, job. Thank you, Danny. Yes. Uh, filling in as a as a DM uh, for our one shot here. So it's only fair for you to get a chance to play every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been rare. Uh, yeah. So, but we will be back in two weeks for chapter five of the Everwind Chronicles. Yep. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll get back on the storyline and hopefully we had some sickness this week and traveling and whatnot and yeah. hopefully everybody will be healthy and, and good to go uh for the next uh chapter right. um even though like there's now that i have the ending of this it's like i want to continue a campaign right. with this. <laughs> it's i mean i do too i know so we gotta so see ridiculous. what happens awesome cool yes all awesome right job. well thank you all yep thank thanks you all. guys good night have a good night thank we'll you. see you in a couple weeks Later. bye <laughs>